What's going on? Welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. You got Allie Barefoot here. I'm typically an NBA host here at Chat Sports, but I decided to take my NBA jersey off for the night and put on my WNBA orange jersey here tonight. I think this is one of the most anticipated WNBA draft classes I personally have ever seen in my lifetime. So I talked to my boss, Brett, and I was like, hey, why don't we go live here on NBA Now, talk about the top prospects that are going to be entering the professional world of WNBA and talk about what is at stake here today. Of course, we all know Caitlin Clark is projected to go number one, but there's also even bigger names as well in here, along with Cameron Brink, Angel Reese, Camila Cardoso, Rakia Jackson. We have got a jam-packed show here for you on NBA Now. So I want you guys to go on ahead and get this comment section popping. Get as much energy in this comment section as there is in New York right now, which is where the WNB draft is going live. It is projected to start at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, but we're going to have a nice little pre-game celebration here for what was probably the best women's college basketball that we have seen. There are a ton of people to talk about, but I want to talk to you guys first. That's why I'm in here. Go on ahead and shout out your city for those who are watching right now. Let me know where you guys are at. If you're in New York, a couple blocks away from where the draft is going, let me know. If not, just going ahead. As a Black Pope is coming in here, he's obviously he's an L.A. Sparks fan. I'm going to assume you're from L.A., but, you know, I love crazy teams from all over the place, even though I am based in Texas. I got John Garcia rep in the Texas right here. San Antonio, Josh McBride from Newton, Iowa. Of course, that's also where Caitlin Clark is from. Des Moines, Iowa is actually where Caitlin Clark is from. So I got Rashard Lee watching from L.A. today. The Dallas native Rashard Lee is making it out West Coast. Okay. Time in the Buckeye, a real one here at Chat Sports, was in this stream way before everybody else. He, of course, is from Ohio. I got Willie Brook Jr. Booker Jr. watching from SC. I got Boston Bob saying Boston. Boston Bob's a loyal fan on Celtics Today by Chat Sports, which is the primary channel I am a host of here. So it's always great to see. But I got Creative Mindstay actually watching from my former residents Richmond Virginia that is where my family lives so shout out to the 804 happy to have you in here I got Jacob Schwartz watching from Bloomington hoping the fever take Holmes or Scalia in round two slash three tonight or maybe both that is definitely on tap I could see Holmes more than likely going in two and I'll have Scalia kind of going in third here but Nonetheless, it could be a good day for them as well. Marquez ja Johnson watching from L.A. Cali. I got a lot of Sparks fans in here, I think. So I got Eliza Dog from Roswell, New Mexico. And I got Rams fan already asking who's got what picks. We're going to break that down in just a few moments. But if you guys are new here, well, let me go ahead and break down how this works. The more you comment, the more you like is how... YouTube knows that there's a party going on in here, and we know there's a party going on in New York. I want to be bigger than them right now, so I want you guys to go on ahead and like this video if you haven't already. The more you comment, the more you like. It just sends it out into the YouTube jet stream, and that is how YouTube puts it on everybody's For You page, and there are now a lot of new WNBA fans, I would assume, because of what a lot of players in college basketball did, like Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese. So hopefully we're going to have a new fan base starting up here. So if you're excited for the WNBA draft like I am, go on ahead and like this video. We got 46 likes so far, but we got 391 people in here. So I may not be very good at math. I know I'm not good at math, but I know math ain't mathin'. If 391 people are watching, then there should be 391 likes. It makes sense, doesn't it? So go on ahead and hit that thumbs up for me. We are currently about 24 minutes away before the Indiana Fever will get on the clock. They will make their first round pick, which we all know who that's going to be. But like you guys said, who does this team have and who does this team have? Well, that's the beauty of it. We're going to go on ahead and break that down here for you guys in just a few moments. So the number one pick is going to go to the Indiana Fever, which of course is going to be Caitlin Clark. Everybody knows that. That's why a lot of people are actually watching which it is completely deserved. She has single-handedly transformed scoring in NCAA, both men and women's. I'm excited to see what she can do competing against somebody like Sabrina Inescu, who plays the New York Liberty, who was, I believe, the leading 
three-point score in a season for the New York Liberty. Actually, I do know that. So it's going to be really fun to have another lethal shooter like that in the WNBA. But, of course, the second pick is going to go to the Los Angeles Sparks. Also, with the fourth pick and seeing how many Sparks fans we do have in the chat, that's going to be very exciting. The question is not who's going number one. The question is who's going number two. Two. There was a lot of speculation that it was going to be Cameron Brink. If you look at any mock draft before the NCAA Final Four Championship, you're going to have Cameron Brink. That was easy. She's been dominating Stanford for the last four years. She was destined to be number two after Caitlin Clark. However, Cardoso stepped up for the South Carolina Gamecocks and made her presence no, that's what makes this draft so special is that the Chicago Sky could really either go Cameron Brink or Cardoso because they're both looking for players of their caliber and of their size. When you've got somebody like Cameron Brink who's standing at six foot four and you got Cardoso at six foot seven, I want you to keep this in your mind because watching the NBA, six foot seven, meh, kind of a smaller forward if you want to think about it. But in the WNBA, there are five players last season in WNBA that are six foot seven or taller. That's why Cardoso is such a legitimate asset to any team, especially one that needs a rebounder. So when you look at the LA Sparks, who also have the second and fourth round pick, they were fourth in defense last year, which means they could really asset from a defensive player like Cameron Brink or Cardoso. So it's going to be very interesting. But nonetheless, I feel like whoever the team doesn't take, that player will go next. So if you do have the Los Angeles Sparks, perhaps take Cameron Brink first, then you're probably going to have Cardoso going third here. However, I know we have a lot of Sparks fans that are popping off right now in the chat. So let me go on ahead and give them some love down here as well. So in this chat right now, I've got a lot of people who are commenting CB for Cameron Brink, but I do have a lot of KCs. I got LAV Dollop. I'm going to go with. I'm not the best at reading usernames, so let me be a little creative here. Andrew ASMR is saying CB. Engineer John is saying KC. Creative Mind State saying KC as well. So I'm seeing the Gamecock effect here of what Cardoso did in the NCAA Women's Championship that put her on the map. I mean, that's how it goes. Cameron Brink hasn't done anything wrong. In fact, she led the nation in blocks per game, men and women, so obviously she is an asset. But Cardoso also knows how to protect that rim. I got Colton and I got Richard Lee saying Cameron Brink, but she's hoping Cameron Brink comes to the wings. Richard, I know, wouldn't it be fun to have Cameron Brink play for Dallas, but she is no way in hell. Cameron Brink is dropping down to the fifth spot. I just can't see it. If it does, this draft's going to be a lot crazier than I originally thought it was. But Levante Rogers saying, go Chicago Sky. RJ Gaming from Baton Rouge. Louisiana, but reside in Houston. Let's go Angel Reese. Well, hopefully Angel Reese could possibly come to the Dallas Wings if she does go fifth. So she could be a little bit close to Houston, but potentially they are looking at either Washington Mystics or the Minnesota Lynx for Angel Reese. So it will be very interesting to see where she will fall coming up here in this draft. So I got Christopher Flores saying I'm a Sun fan. They are going to be very good this season. They're ranked third right now in the standings from last year. I think the Connecticut Sun were on the brink of actually doing some damage last year in the final. So it would be very interesting to see what the Connecticut Sun can do as well. See, Keem Studio says, don't sleep on Rakia. I have my favorites coming up in just a few moments, and Rakia is on there. I'm telling you, there are a lot of players in this draft. And it is unfortunate because media only likes to reflect on a few players, and that's how it is for WNBA and NBA and everything in between. But I do believe that Jackson and Fair deserve so much media attention. I think it's going to be really interesting to see where they go in the top 12 here. As you guys know, the WNBA draft is three rounds, 12 picks each round. So not typical of your draft like an NBA or an NFL. Only 15 players are actually invited to New York to be a part of the WNBA draft. So there are going to be a lot of familiar faces here, not just current WNBA players, but also a lot of celebrities as well. Don Staley, the head coach of the Gamecocks, is also here. So it's going to be a really good night. Engineer John saying we need new WNBA teams. Well, funny you say that, Engineer John, because the Bay Area has actually agreed to start a WNBA team. 
which is going to be super fun. You brought a dynasty to the Bay Area with the Golden State Warriors over the last decade who had this championship type of caliber, and now you're going to bring another WNBA team to that area. California is going to be stacked with the LA Sparks and now the new Bay Area team. So obviously you got to make a bigger expansion if you're going to have bigger names coming into it, like a Caitlin Clark, like an Angel Reese. They're bringing you publicity. Do something with it. All right here, Smitty. Are my, uh... Yeah. All right, i got to ask one question here for you guys, as Roly is always distracting us here at Chat Sports. I need you guys to go on ahead and hit that sub button for me if you haven't already. 369, very nice. 485,000 subscribers in here, man. Let's see if we can get this 369, very nice. 400, oh, excuse me, 500,000 subscribers here before we start this NBA draft, before Caitlin Clark even goes to the Indiana Fever. I want to see this number We're all the way up to see 500. This is a live sub counter. So when you do hit that sub button, it makes my heart flutter and it makes this number go up. It's a win-win for everybody here. That subscribe link is now currently in the chat. You hear Boston Bob in here saying subscribe, subscribe. I got Richard Lee in here saying Allie besides Clark. Who's your top five picks? Patience, Richard Lee, patience. We're going to get there. Don't you worry. Here's my peak up top. That's right. These are my top two picks in the WNBA draft. I got Dice Affair and I got Caitlin Clark. Of course, Caitlin Clark's going to be number one. It, it, she's just a Steph Curry of the WNBA. And you wonder what's really cool that I found out? And, of course, I do have my right-hand man here, Tyler Smitty, here with me producing on the ones and twos. Shout-out to Smitty. When I was doing my research on all of these beautiful ladies and what they're going to provide to the WNBA, I found Caitlin Clark's routine, daily shooting routine, that allows her to do the damage on the court that we have seen. So I can't take credit for this. This is written by somebody else. But Clark's private shooting sessions generally consist of the following. She starts with about five to eight minutes of around the basket, working on her form, her step back, her guide hand, just very simple basics to become what she is. Then she goes into a 300-shot routine, 100 free throws with a goal to make 90. 100 mid-ranges with a goal to make 80. And then she takes 100 threes with a goal to make 70. Her goal is to constantly hit that 70% mark from a three-point line, which is insane. But that's not it. Then she goes into a off-the-dribble off combination shooting where she tries to make 70 to 75 out of 100 shots. And then she goes 50%. From the logo, 50 out of 100 threes, and she mixes in ball handling and defensive side drills weaved in between the shooting sets. She does this all within an hour. That is why Caitlin Clark is the best WNBA player who is about to perform that we have ever seen. First of all, shout out to you guys. My goal is 500. We're at 520. Keep hitting that sub button. Secondly, I have had numerous conversations with some men here in the chat sports office that think they can take somebody like a Caitlin Clark, which is blasphemy. Because after you hear that shooting routine, it is no question what Clark is going to do for the Indiana Fever. As you guys know, they're already projecting record high attendance. The Fever was actually the second lowest attendance last season at home for any WNBA team. Now, they have sold out legitimately almost entirely their stadium except for some nosebleeds up top. Sold out season ticket holders. They have skyrocketed. Even other opponents have now upgraded their facilities to have, Angel, to have Caitlin Clark come play in there. Las Vegas Aces. They upgraded to a stadium that could fit more people when they come to take on the back-to-back -back WNBA championship. So, if you guys are excited for a pro like Caitlin Clark to come into the WNBA and do what she's been doing at Iowa for the past four years, go on ahead and like this video because she is nasty. There is no question about it. However, I do want to talk about another person that I think is actually going to make a big splash here in the NBA, WNBA, and that's going to be Daisha Fair. She's a point guard. She's five foot five from Syracuse. Let me reiterate that. She's five foot five which does have a lot of concern coming into the WNBA at that small of a height. For reference, I'm about five foot seven, and I feel like I'm a taller woman. However, in the WNBA, it does kind of matter between that 5'10 to 6'1 height if you really want to be a productive guard. But the fact that she led the ACC 
in three-point field goals, 115 and three-point attempts. Not to mention she is actually the number three all-time Division I scorer, 3,403 points. The way that you watched Aisha Fair, she's so scrappy. She's so tenacious. And yes, you may think that she's five foot five, but she doesn't play like she's five foot five. The only cons is, will her game translate from college to the WNBA because of her technique and because of what she does? The reason why she's so successful at her eye is because she's a crafty dribbler. She works really well down low, which could be great going up against somebody like the Seattle Storm that's going to have a six foot one guard on you. She's going to be able to dribble in and out in between their legs because she is so small. She uses angles to attack her tallest defender, which I think is just mind over matter. You may not have the height, and that's something you can't control, but you, what you can't control is your court vision, your basketball IQ. She will pull on angles that taller defenders cannot reach and she can get hot at any moment. I think she will be a showstopper when she does come into the WNBA. She is projected to be about a 10th through 12th pick right now. Obviously, there are some reserves about whether or not she can consistently put up shots throughout the NBA, as she was only shooting 40% or better once in her career. So the efficiency is an issue, but I do think she'll be able to really touch on that. And But nonetheless, provide some defense as she did lead the ACC with two and a half steals per game. I am very excited to see Daisha Fair in the WNBA, but that's not it. Rashard Lee, you asked who my top five is. Why don't we go on ahead and get it? Go on ahead and hit that sub button for me if you guys have not already as I break down the other five. And these are just a few top five players. These are not everybody in the draft that I'm super excited to see. There are a ton of women. There are great athletes entering the WNBA, but... Here are my top five, and I'm going to tell you why. So, Rakia Jackson, I can't remember who said it in the chat just a moment ago about why they love Rakia Jackson so much, but let me talk to you about the Lady Vol. Holy shit, I'm excited for Jackson. She genuinely, and Smitty's going to be really intrigued when I say this, she reminds me of Jason Tatum. Isn't that wild to say? But I don't mean in terms of obviously the caliber that Jason Tatum has become. He's 26 years old. But the way that he is able to defend and play all five positions, she gives me that kind of modest attitude the way that Jason Tatum does and that calmness that you do see, but don't poke it because the bear will come out. Rakia Jackson is actually right-handed. She's six foot two. She's a small forward. She's a lady vol. But the beauty is she is just as good with her left as she is her right. In fact, she might be better with her left than she is with her right. She is a three-level shooting threat. Her mid-range is just as seamless as her three-point shot, especially around the rim. I have never seen a player ever in my life have so much stability in their hips, in their legs, when they are being pounded at the rim to be able to put up shots. And the beauty of her is she's an offensive rebounding machine. Holy cow. Can she grab the O boards? The number one thing I love about her when she is on offense is the fact that the minute she gets that offensive rebound, she has almost crafted off the bounce to put it right back up off the rim. She knows immediately once that ball touches her hands to put it back up. She's not looking for an outlet pass. Doesn't matter if she's double teamed, triple teamed, or there's one big girl in front of her. She will go back up to the board, and that is why she's so successful in the paint, which is going to translate really well in the WNBA because they're going to have Brittany Griners. They're going to have Brianna Stewart. They're going to have Liz Cambridges in the paint who are going to be able to bully her. A lot of these girls in college are going to get bullied for a little bit because of the way that their game will translate. I think that she does better when she's double teamed, and I think she's going to be a steal in the draft in the top five. Woo! We're, going, we're getting into this. We're getting into this. All right. Sarah Smull saying, I'm excited for my girl, Caitlin Clark, to go number one. Hopefully, go Hawkeyes. I can almost guarantee she will go number one. I'm going to break down those last two players here in just a few moments while my girl Maya's World is coming in saying, what's up, Allie Barefoot? Who's co-hosting with you in the live stream for the WNBA draft? That would be my right-hand man who does Celtics and Warriors with me as well, Tyler Smitty. What's going on, y'all? Big day. The, a new era of the WNBA coming at you. Caitlin Clark at the top. Daisha Fair uh, going to be an excellent player as well. Obviously, we talked about... Um, Rakia Jackson, a Angel Reese we're going to talk about a little bit, Cameron Brink, 
is going to go up very high as well. I'm ex very excited for this crop of talent to head into the league. It's going to be a, a very interesting to see how these, uh, how these teams fare and who, who, who they decide to select in the top five, top ten, um, because those could be franchise-changing players up there in the first round for you. I'm excited to see who goes early. I am too, obviously, other than number one. That number two spot, even that number three is going to be a lot. I got some familiar faces in here saying Celtic Raider. Let's go, Ali and Smitty. I got Boston Bob saying best in the biz. I got Jose saying Martinez, let's go. I got Creative Mindset letting us know there's less than eight minutes until Caitlin Clark will be going to the Indiana Fever here, which is going to be extremely Exciting. So let me break down those last two players here for you before Why we hop not? in to what possibly is about to happen. So we got to talk about the girl, Angel Reese. What an impact she has made in NCAA women's basketball. She's right up there in impactful players like Caitlin Clark is as well. I'm really excited to see Angel Reese's game translate to the WNBA because she's had that length. While she is six foot three and her length and her height really does play a factor in the NCAA women's, I'm a little worried that it will become an issue for her in the first season just to really kind of adjust to now playing with girls who are bigger, if not the same size as her. But the only thing I have about Angel Reese, other than the fact that she is an incredible offensive rebounder, she led the NCAA women's with five rebounds per game just on the offensive side. She is a double, double machine. The fact is, if she does go to the Minnesota Lynx, who I do believe is pick number eight or seven, I can't remember which one it is right now, the eight. If she does go to the Minnesota Lynx, which is actually where I think she would fit in best, is because the Lynx were the worst rebounding team in 2023. I think that Angel Reese could make an immediate impact, whereas I don't know if Dallas Wings at number five would really be her M.O., plus the Lynx aren't really in need of any big position right now. So if Angel Reese wanted to build up her resume just a little bit for one year in the WNBA, I think the Lynx would be the best option for that. Of course, she could go to the Chicago Sky, which I do want to bring up the trade that happened here a couple of weeks ago that did actually set up something that goes really well here for Angel Reese. So currently, the girls got her back got a net worth of $1.7 million. She said this before. She wanted to play her last year of eligibility at LSU because, well, excuse me, actually she denied her last year of eligibility at LSU, which would have been this upcoming year. But she said last year she wants to come back because she's making such good money playing the NCAA, and what she's done for them has been great. If Smitty, whenever you want to pull up that trade, would be great. I think that Angel Reese has got a lot of mobility in the low post, and I'm not the only one that thinks that. Here's the thing that is really interesting about what happened a couple weeks ago is that wherever that trade went, <laughs> okay, is that the Minnesota Lynx actually did acquire some picks here from the Chicago Sky and vice versa. And there has been a lot of speculation that Chicago Sky actually opened up the 2024 seventh draft pick right ahead of that Minnesota Lynx so they could secure Angel Reese. Because when you look at what the Lynx need, it obviously is some glass cleaning. They need some mobility down low, which I think Angel Reese does a really good job of hip movement, feet movement, bullying down low, which we have seen. She does not back down from any defender. And I do think she would be really good at a low post scoring. But the Chicago Sky made a trade with the Lynx, giving up some really good players, giving up future picks just so they could get the seventh draft pick this year, which is why I think Angel Reese will go to the Chicago Sky in the seventh spot. So what? when would you pick Angel Reese? That is the main question. She's been projected to go anywhere between fifth and tenth. That is kind of her landing spot right now. So I got, uh, <laughs> well, I got Disney for the win saying Reese is number one if, if it's looks. Well, her outfit tonight is amazing. I actually want to ask you guys if you saw any outfits on the orange carpet that you loved. I thought Cameron Brink looked stunning. I loved Caitlin Clark's Prada outfit. I think that the w WNBA has set the standard for girls popping off just like the ESPYs as well. So let me see what else everybody else thinks here. Andrea Samar is saying maybe the 10th pick. Creative Mindset saying not the 5. I don't think she would really fit very well in the Dallas Wings offense right now. Jerome saying uh, Angel Reese should go number one. She possibly could if there wasn't somebody like a Caitlin Clark here ever seen. 
Uh, Jeremiah, we're not going to show the, uh, the draft live. We don't have broadcasting rights. But if you're looking for another analyst, another version of the, NBA, of the WNBA draft, this is what we provide. Just want to be able to give everybody an opportunity to witness one of the best in WNBA drafts, I personally think, in the history of the WNBA. I got uh, a lot of people in here saying Angel pick at the 8. I've seen Angel pick at the 7 as well. Uh, I got Bobby saying bring to the Sparks, which could definitely be an opportunity at number 2. Excuse me, number 3, which means Cordoso could go at number 2. Like I said, whichever one the Sparks don't pick, the other one will go to, to the Chicago Sky. So it'll be very interesting. What do you say? Yeah, all right, so let's go on ahead and, uh, y'all, I'm really bad at math, like really bad at math, but I know for a fact that 4,100 people who are in here right now have not liked this video because I have 277 likes, y'all. Math ain't mathin', and I do want to bring this up just real quick before we hop into the WNBA draft, which is about three minutes away. I want to go ahead and get our drinking pants on because I am so excited. This is the event of the year, in my opinion. I think this is absolutely star-studded. I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of men in this office talking about how I think there were more stars in the WNBA this year than there was in the NCAA. There are more stars in the NCAA women's tournament than there was in the men's, and that's okay. I think it was finally time to have somebody like Caitlin Clark take the spotlight for a little bit. Angel Reese, Cameron Brink, Camila Cardoso. There are so many people going on here, and I want to give a huge shout-out to Raiders! As my man L.A. Crash Dog is coming in with our first super chat of the night, saying that it should be okay. Muggsy Bogues at five foot three and Arrow Boykins at five foot five play in the NBA. And if you have talent, nothing will stop you. I completely agree, L.A. Crash Dog. If you're going to be five foot five, the way that Fair has learned how to technique, how to have that technique and hone in her craft to be able to hit the angles that taller defenders can't reach, and how to be able to find her posts at the mid range. I think Fair is going to do just fine. Obviously, it does depend on where she goes in the first round of the WNBA draft. But five foot five, she's good, man. Cheers to you, LA Crash Dog. Shout out to you. Go ahead and give Crash Dog some love in the comment section below. I think that Daisha, she's going to be one of my steal. That's why I put her in my top five is because she's somebody who I want to look at before the draft and say she's going to do something. And then two years later, when she's blown up and she's a star, you know, I could have predicted it, something like that. So just like LA Crash Dog did, any super chat does equal a shout out. Give LA Crash Dog some love as he is a huge member of the Raiders report here at Chat Sports. If you want to talk about your team, NBA or WNBA, totally fine if you don't have a WNBA team yet. We know that the NBA playoffs are about to start this Sunday. The play in starts tomorrow which will be live on Warriors today by Chat Sports for that as well. Go on ahead and send in $5. You can use hashtag NBA or WNBA if you would like us to talk about your team. $10 will be a beer bong. If you guys have ever had me as your host on one of these shows, you know that Felicia the Flamingo is my girl here at Chat Sports. She is my beer bong. I am the only one that uses this for some reason. How can you tell? Well, this is a beer bong. I would love to do a beer bong race with you guys. So that'll be $10. And then $20 will be a nice little shotgun race between Smitty and I. But... I got a nice two more Super Chats rolling in here. One from Leon Roberson saying, it's crazy. I was never interested in the WNBA draft, yet here I am. Thank you, LSU, Angel, and Caitlin Clark. Hey, all it takes is that one player. I'm a Yankees fan primarily because of Derek Jeter himself. All it takes is one player to get you interested. That's it. If you live near a local WNBA team, I highly suggest going. They're a lot more fun than you think they are. So, here is where it starts, and I hope this draft does make you watch a little bit more. But thank you so much, Boston Bob, coming in with a $20 Super Chat as well. And I got another Super Chat coming in for video games. We're going to get to those in just one minute. I want you guys to go on ahead and spam your goats in the comment section if you are ready to start the WNBA draft. They're making their last appearances here on the orange carpet. I got Cardoso looking stunning and a full orange jumpsuit. I've got Angel Reese rocking this dune-like headdress. All sparkles. We knew she was going to pop off with this. I was waiting for her outfit. Caitlin Clark rocking a nice little two-piece set in Prada. Very tomboy, but very chic. You love to see it. Cameron Brink, who is stunning. If it doesn't work out in the WNBA, she's going to be a model. I stamp it. She's beautiful. We are getting ready to start off the WNBA draft here. 
Of course, Ryan Rucco, Rebecca Lobo, and Carter are going to be on the call here for the WNBA draft. I will break down the number one pick here in just a few moments. I got to turn on my TV because if I can't hear, y'all can't hear, which is crazy. I got a ton of people in here spamming their goes. Keep spamming that for me. I got 6,100 people in this stream right now, 651 likes. Hit that button for me. I promise I'm going to get to all my drinking apparatuses when we do have a moment. But first, we do got to talk about what has happened here in the WNBA draft while we are here. So the Caitlin Clark effect is truly real. The viewership was off the charts for not one, not two, but three games that consisted of Iowa, which is very crazy to say. I do believe I made a weigh-in three that provides all that viewership. Okay, all good. So nonetheless, 81% of viewership did go up. Of course, 18.2 million, million viewers did tune in to the UConn game. 13 million tuned in to the UConn versus 18.2 million was the UConn versus, um, one more time. We're going to get it here. Gonna, it was South Carolina versus Iowa. 13 million was UConn versus Iowa. And 12 million was Iowa versus LSU. So obviously I told you guys I wasn't good at math. And there it is. I'm really not. So it's super fun. But the Caitlin Clark is real. Caitlin Clark effect. And I'm really excited to see what she'll do here at Indiana with the fever. They're currently talking about Caitlin Clark here on the broadcast, talking about what kind of impact she has made, not just for women, but for men's athletics as well. She's really changing the game, which I think will be super interesting to see what she can do at the pro level as well. I think Sabrina Inescu is somebody that really reminds me of somebody like Caitlin Clark. You know, she was huge at Oregon. She really impacted that mama mentality. She's very close to somebody like Kobe Bryant, of course, even after he passed. Now Sabrina Inescu is playing for one of the largest cities in the world, New York, and she is making her way all the way, hopefully, back to the WNBA Finals, which is where the Aces did beat them three games to one in that series. So when I see Clark, it does remind me of the impact that Inescu has made in the WNBA, and I hope that Clark can make her stamp even bigger than Inescu did. Of course, she's got her own signature shoe line. She does a lot of stuff with, stuff with the NBA. We saw a three-point competition, which I'll talk about here more in just a few moments, but Nonetheless, Caitlin Clark is there still discussing her before they do make this draft pick. We all know Caitlin Clark is going number one, and she absolutely deserves it. So the Indiana Fever will be making their pick here just shortly. I believe it will happen in the next couple of minutes or so. But I have a challenge for you guys. We are currently 129 likes away from 1,000. Let's go on ahead and see if we can get 1,000 likes before Caitlin Clark does make her way to the WNBA. If you haven't already, Go on ahead and like this video. If you want to see Caitlin Clark, go to the Indiana Fever. Of course, everybody knows the really heartwarming story that when she was in grade school, she wrote down her future dreams on this sheet. And of course, it was to meet Maya Moore, to go to college on a scholarship, and to be a professional basketball player. So she's touching everybody's hearts, including mine. Thank you guys so much for the 1,000 likes. We currently have 1,160. So I appreciate you guys. Let me talk a little bit more about Caitlin Clark here as she is the two-time AP Player of the Year, the two-time Naismith College Player of the Year. And about a week after her college career ended, she was retired by the University of Iowa. Her jersey is now hanging in the rafters, and they said there's nobody like Caitlin Clark. There will never be anybody like Caitlin Clark. We, of course, all know she did break the NCAA Division I all-time scoring record between men and women, she has 3,951. She was just shy of 4,000 career points. She did waive her fifth year of eligibility. She did declare for the WNBA draft a couple of months ago. So now that Caitlin Clark is here, she's looking stunning as ever in her Prada. She was reportedly offered $5 million to play in the big three by none other than Ice Cube. And she is known as the Curry of the WNBA. So Kathy Engelbert is now at the podium to discuss the Indiana Fever's first pick in the WNBA 2024 draft. As Kathy is actually just going to break down Caitlin Clark's performance in the NCAA Women's Tournament, what she's done for the game, which I think is very cool to do when you know the first pick is going to go to somebody like Clark. But I do find it interesting they're showing Daisha Fair a few times on this camera as well. Hopefully Daisha Fair does get her moment in this top first round. Of course, she is my number two prospect in this draft right now. So Kathy is still talking about Caitlin Clark and what she has done 
in what she is going to do in the WNBA. As you guys know, she is going to make this attendance of the Indiana Fever astronomical. Her head coach from Iowa State, oh, that's a really weird lineup. Her head coach from Iowa is there, then Kim Mulkey, then Jay from State Farm. What a fun row. What a fun row. <laughs> How does he get <laughs> Oh, well, it is the State Farm WNBA draft, so that is why. But if there is a sporting event, he will be there. As Kathy is making her opening statements ahead of the Indiana Fever's first round pick, going ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. We are under 100 from reaching 370,000 subscribers here on our main channel. If you guys want more content like this, this is our first ever WNBA live stream here. We hope that we can continue to do this throughout the season. But if not, we do have a ton of content on here about NBA as well and NFL. So there's a lot of things happening in both of those sporting, sporting leagues. So it'll be very interesting. I want you guys to go ahead and hit that sub button for me. Kathy's still giving her opening remarks, congratulating all the beautiful women that are here right now on their accomplishments, what they're about to do as well. We can't show the draft. We don't have broadcasting rights. I do apologize. We've got a huge show planned for you guys. We've got every graphic that you will see on a national network. Producer Sam Brown even put these together. I apologize that we can't show the draft, but we hope that you do stick around and we can give our analysis and give you the best show that we can. But nonetheless, thank you very much. Uh, we don't want to get sued. So we that's why we're sued. not showing the yeah, draft. Like we don't want to lose the entire company. Surely you'd understand that. I do like my job, respectfully, yes. But uh, thank you so much. Okay. The WNBA 28th season in history is tipping off on May 14th. That is when the season starts. So as you guys know, the WNBA is a little bit different from other professional leagues. Of course, when the NBA draft does happen, it's about June, and their league doesn't start until October. Well, the WNBA just gets things going. We're women. We know how to start this thing. We know how to get it off. So with that being said, they do start on May 14th. So the Indiana Fever is now officially on the clock. They have reached the playoffs from 2005 to 2016. But like I said, their attendance has been second lowest in the WNBA at home. Hopefully, Caitlin Clark is going to change that. The reason why I am so excited that she is going to the Indiana Fever is one name, Aaliyah Boston. She was dominant at US, excuse me, at South Carolina, U of SC, if you will, last season. I loved Boston. She won the Lisa Leslie Award numerous times. She averaged about 14 and a half points in her first season of the WNBA. She was the rookie of the year in the WNBA. I think Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark is going to be a matchup that I wish I had in college, but I'm going to get it in the WNBA. So I don't have a favorite WNBA team, but you best believe I'm going to be tuning into the Indiana Fever games this season. Aaliyah Boston is in attendance here tonight to congratulate her newest teammate, of course, Aaliyah Boston was the number one overall draft pick last year. She played for the great Don Staley. But Iowa and Caitlin Clark did end Aaliyah Boston's run in the NCAA Women's Tournament. And, of course, they did get revenge beating Iowa in the national championship here this year. So the Indiana Fever is currently on the clock. They finished 10th in the WNBA as well. So if you guys want them to pick... Caitlin Clark, type your CC. With the first pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, Kathy is going to announce that the Indiana Fever has selected Caitlin Clark to play for their organization in the 2024-25 WNBA season. The first pick is officially underway. If you want to give Caitlin Clark some love, type your CC down below. Obviously, what she did her senior year of college is incredible. Over 30 points a game. But she was also dominating as her court vision and her basketball IQ took over on almost every single play. If you have ever seen this woman make an assist, it will truly change your life. She has the caliber of somebody like Steph Curry when she will play in the WNBA. The way she reads the floor, the way she can read defenses, and she thinks a play ahead. Her step backs are lethal. We know she can rock it from anywhere between next to the rim and half court.
Caitlin Clark does this game after game. She never ceases to amaze me. She is currently averaging about 8.9 assists per game. She's got 7.5 rebounds per game. It will take a moment, as Diana Taurasi did want to say during her stream, that maybe Caitlin Clark will get bullied her first year at WNBA. Maybe she won't be ready for the WNBA, but I think Sabrina Inescu came out. I think she has a chance to really change the Indiana Fever schedule this season. I think she's going to do a lot of great things. And I got Lance in here saying, CC, congrats, Caitlin Clark. You're going to the Indiana Fever. Good luck with your first year in the WNBA. Obviously, in my poll earlier today, who are you most excited to watch in the WNBA? 65% out of 10,000 views, said Caitlin Clark. I mean, we know it, man. We've been here. We've been on this train. We love to see this for her. If you are excited for pro Caitlin Clark, WNBA Caitlin Clark playing for the Indiana Fever, like this video right now. Of course, this does put the Chicago Sky on the clock, which is where they have the opportunity to take either Cameron Brink or Camila Cordoso. They can obviously take whoever else, but excuse me, Sparks are on the clock. They have two and four. Chicago Sky has number three. I apologize. Sophie Spam and her CCs, Maria Spam and CC as well. Brian saying Cameron bring time. Like I said, it was never the number one. It was always the number two. I'm going to start that poll over just one second. Who goes number two? You guys have a little bit of time to answer this. So I got Cameron Brink or Camilla Cardoso. Go on ahead and put your votes in right now on our newest poll while the Los Angeles Sparks are on the clock to make their pick here at number two. They said Disney for the win. Said Caitlin is the price, but Sparks win the draft if they get Cameron and Camilla. They do have the opportunity to get both if one does not go in the third pick. However, I could just, I, I don't really see that happening, obviously, but, you know, everything could go a little bit awry. So Chicago Sky actually does need pretty much everything here that is going to be happening in the next pick, in the third pick, excuse me. Whereas the Los Angeles Sparks, they just need franchise players, which obviously is going to be a Cardoso. It's going to be a Brink, if you will. And they did trade away a lot of their aspects here in the offseason as well. Holly Rowe asking Caitlin Clark if she has any more goals she would like to write down for the WNBA. And she said, just be myself. The Los Angeles Sparks are looking for some rebounding and rim protection, and that is going to come with the next two picks. Cameron Brink or Camilla Cardoso, that is who is up for grabs up next. Obviously, they are the best available at that position. Who do you guys got? Type CB, type KC. I put that new poll on there as well. If you guys want to vote in that, you are more than welcome to. Let me see what you guys are thinking here. This is the third straight season that the Sparks have missed the playoffs. So obviously they're looking for a big game changer here. They have picks number two, four, and 48 coming up. So like you guys said, there are, uh, excuse me, 28. I don't know why I said 48. Two, four, and 28. There are only 36 picks here in this NV WNBA draft. So when you look at a franchise player, I'm going to go with uh, Cameron Brink. I, I think that she has really created a name for herself at Stanford. Well, I do think Cardoso has done the exact same thing at South Carolina. Brink has been doing this effectively for four years. Cardoso really made her spotlight towards this last run in the NCAA Women's Tournament. But like we've seen, that's all it takes is just to be able to show off what you can do in the biggest moments, going up against somebody like Caitlin Clark, which would be great. So, Camilla Codoso, actually, she jumped a few draft spots after the NCAA championship. So, it goes to show you that when she popped off in the biggest spotlight, going up against the best players, that is what rose her stock. It wasn't necessarily the regular season, although she had averaged about 14.5 points per game and about 10 boards per game. And the beauty of it, like I said earlier, is that she's six foot seven. Cardoso is six foot seven, and there were five total WNBA players in the, in the league last year that were six foot seven or taller. So obviously, she is a very rare commodity when it comes to 
playing in the WNBA. She's actually Brazilian. She left her family in Brazil when she was 15 years old to go pursue this dream that she has. And I think she has deserved everything that she is about to get. She will also be featured, along with Caitlin Clark, on ESPN Plus's Full Court documentary, talking about her life, talking about the league, talking about what it took to get there. So we are currently in a TV timeout. While the Los Angeles Sparks do think about who they're going to take, I mean, I truly think this has to come down to a game time decision. Cardoso was in the top 10 in the nation, men and women's, for her defensive rating. She dominated 72.6 for her defensive rating. She was the most outstanding player in the NCAA tournament. However, Cameron Brink led the nation in blocks. Men and women, she averaged about 3.6 a game. She is a three-time Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year, and she is third in rebounding in the, in the women's category. Not to mention she was recently awarded the Lisa Leslie Award, which of course does go to the best collegiate center. Aliyah Boston, who plays for the Indiana Fever, has won it three times in her career. So like I said, now you got Boston down low. You got Clark in the backcourt. They're going to be dominant. But Brink can also bring some damage here to L.A., and I think she would make a really big fit here with the Los Angeles Sparks. But we're going to have to wait and see as the Sparks are still on the clock, they did give away Agumake in free agency, which was a really big loss. So the pick is now officially in. Let's see if they're going to do Cameron Brink or Camilla Cardoso here on the second round pick in the WNBA draft. If you guys are excited to see who is going to go number two overall in the 2024 WNBA draft, go ahead and hit that sub button for me. How many people do we have rocking in here? Almost 10 thousand people in here right now i got 1700 likes as well go on ahead and hit that sub button for me as you see this clock is rolling going up not a clock actually a sub counter but looks like a clock sometimes all right i got a lot of cardoso in here i got a lot of cc is the goat i got jeremy Ch <laughs> jeremy chug sending in a five dollar super chat Allie is an inspiration for girls everywhere. Shout out to you for pushing to go live tonight. Thank you so much, Chugs. You know what? I'm going to give this nice beer shears here to my man, Chugs. A little ASMR for you. Oh, don't you love that? Hey, Jeremy, do great in your basketball game tonight. Shout out to the Chat Sports Basketball League. And to answer all the men in our office, no, you cannot beat the UConn starting five women's team. So thank you very much, Chugs. We appreciate you. And as always, Raiders! Shout out to Chugs, man. If you know, you know. Give him some love down below. And I'm going to give uh, this lemon lime some love as well. All right. The Los Angeles Sparks are obviously taking their sweet time deciding a really impactful pick here between Cameron Brink or Camila Cardoso. You are getting two elite defensive players, not to mention six foot four versus six foot seven. You got a forward and you've got a center to decide. Like I said, the Sparks are fourth in defensive rating in the WNBA. They're averaging about 100 in their defensive rating last season. So if you were to add a huge defensive asset like Cameron Brink, who has won multiple defensive player of the years on top of the fourth overall defensive rating, you're getting a steal. Kathy's at the podium. Let's see who they take. With the second overall pick for the Los Angeles Sparks, they're going to go with Cameron Brink of Stanford. Highly, highly deserved. I know they were waiting until the very last moment to make their decision. Cardoso has been very impactful for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Just won an NCAA championship with them. But Cameron Brink, I truly believe she is once-in-a-lifetime player. Let's talk about what she did last year. 17.4 points per game. 11.9 rebounds per game, nearly 12 boards. That's about three more boards than Cardoso was getting at six foot seven. She averages 3.7 blocks a game. Like I said, leads the nation, men and women's. There is some concerns about her shooting range, what she has in her bag, the multiple moves that she has in her bag. But the beauty of the WNBA is that when you were at Stanford, Cameron Brink had to do it all. She had to score. She had to defend. She was absolutely the number one player that a lot of college player teams 
we're looking at on their scouting report. But now, coming to the WNBA, you're going to be able to get some lethal shooters so you can have time to develop her offensive game while she continues to dominate primarily in the low post. And she did also average about three assists per game while shooting 51% from the field, which is not bad for somebody labeled as an inconsistent shooter. I feel very bad for Holly Rose. She's about five foot five, saying next to six foot four Cameron Brink right now. But hey, girl, it happens to the best of us. The LA Sparks are in a rebuild year, and I think if they're looking for a franchise player, you're not going to get much better than a Cameron Brink. No shade to Carmela Cardoso. I do believe that she will be going third here next to the Chicago Sky. But like, who said it? Somebody said in the comment section what a steal it would be for them to get Brink and Cardoso. I mean, that would be a front court I have truly never seen that dominant before in my entire life. So we're going to have to wait and see who the Chicago Sky will be taking as they are currently on the clock. They did lose to Vegas in the first round of the WNBA playoffs. Of course, Las Vegas Aces are back to back to back champions. So they are obviously the powerhouse here in the WNBA sphere. But if you guys love the WNBA, if you're having a good time, if you're glad Caitlin Clark and Cameron Brink have gone number one and number two, and if your predictions are still good, go on ahead and like this video for me. Really what the sky is looking at right here, which is why it stinks. I really do think that they needed somebody like Cameron Brink and the Chicago skies because they're looking for a stretch four. They're really looking for that extra length, mainly in the lower post, along with some rim protecting, which Cardoso is a center. She's six foot seven, so you're really going to get a primary number five spot, whereas, whereas Brink is a, a power forward. So it's a little bit tough there, but I do think Cardoso could still go at number three. And she doesn't, although the Sparks may have just won the draft. That is easy. Help us get to 2,500 likes. We're 450 likes away right now. Go on ahead and hit that like button for me, please. The February 6th trade did have Kalia Copper and Morgan Birch going to the Phoenix, uh, um, excuse me, uh, Phoenix Mercury. God, I almost said Suns. And then Chicago did receive Brianna Turner and Michelle Onwanrie in the picks 2024 third overall, which is about what is about to happen. So this happened in a trade. So obviously, they see something that's coming in this third pick right here. As a Patrick Seatman, a loyal Chicago native coming in with a nice little $2 super chat here. Let's say, let's go, Sky Seeps, who is the host of our Bulls report here at Chat Sports. Seeps, this is your pick, baby. Who do you want going in the WNBA draft to your Chicago Sky? Let me know. Um, do you have time to make another poll? Or I can do it. Which pick? Which pick does Angel Reese go? Five, six, seven, eight. You can add nine if we can do five or not. All right, so if you're wondering why Seep sent in $2, well, we do also have a super chat menu going here. Like I said, the Chicago Sky is on the clock. I do think Cardoso is an obvious pick here for the Chicago Sky. They really do need a big stretch down low. They also really need some rim protection, so I think they'd be stupid to pass up on somebody like Cardoso. What she has done for the South Carolina Gamecocks is unreal, and I also do believe, and, and, and you can compare this to any great coach that's ever coached before. You look at any Alabama football player, you know they're ready for the next level because they've coached under Nick Saban. When you have a Gamecock that has played under Don Staley, you know that what you're about to get is a prodigy coming in to the WNBA. So the fact that she has learned not only under Don Staley, but she also learned under Aaliyah Boston, who played a year before her, really goes to show that she is going to do wonders in the WNBA. Chicago Sky has picks number three, seven, and 13, and they're really looking for a lot of things here. Like I said, primarily down low towards the front court is where they could really use help. But when you're looking at Chicago Sky, just think of a blank, spa blank space. They want to rebuild here just like LA does. If you look at all top four here, they all want to rebuild. But the good news is, is that Kathy is coming to announce where they are going to send the third pick. The Chicago Sky has selected Camila Cardoso. Just like I said, she is going to do incredible with the Chicago Sky. You want to add some height? You just got six foot seven. Now she is number six 
in the WNBA of players who is over six foot seven. We're going to go on ahead and break out what she did last year in the NCAA women's tournament in her regular season and ultimately just led the Gamecocks to a national championship. She's having a phenomenal month here to start off her WNBA journey. She averaged about 14.5 points per game, about 10 boards per game. Like I said, when you've got Cameron Brink, who's averaging nearly 12 boards a game at 6'4", you really see how impressive Cameron Brink is, but you can't rule out what Cardoso has done. She was ejected after pushing Flage Johnson to the floor in the SEC championship, which did, some would say, hinder her stock in the draft. But now coming in at number three, obviously that's not an issue Everybody gets a little bit agitated in games, so I'm not looking at that. What I'm looking at is the fact that she projects rare movements in the paint. I love what she does down low. She has beautiful skills, such as being able to flip her hips primarily when she is guarding the number one spot. Here is why I also love somebody like Cardoso when it comes to defense. It's not just down low. It's not, hey, Cardoso, you're six foot seven, go guard the biggest girl on that team. No, it's you can guard all five positions. When you are watching her take on somebody like Caitlin Clark, I promise you, go look at her highlights. When you're watching her take on somebody like Caitlin Clark, if she is posted up on her right there, and if some point guard wanted to drive past her, she is immediately going to flip those hips and be able to join her down by the rim. And not only that, but she'll finish at the rim with a big time block. She's got a humongous range of post moves that I do think are going to benefit her with the Chicago sky. Patrick Seatman, I hope that you are happy with the pick. The only problem is her offense. She does struggle to finish at the rim, which I do think will be a problem when she does go up against some big girls in the WNBA. Like I said, she obviously dominated in height in college, but now that she's got bigger girls, it'll be really interesting to see what she can do, if she can learn to finish, if she, maybe she works with more professional coaches and players around her that that could be something that she could go on ahead and clean up there. But she did work down. She worked on cutting down her fouls and bringing up her rebounds, which is exactly what she did. She did have a career low fouls. She's averaging 4.6 fouls per, excuse me, 2 point, <laughs> two, I was like, damn, 2.6 fouls per game. 2.6 fouls per game, which is not bad at all for a post player for a center like that who is going to be targeted every single time play. So now the Los Angeles Sparks are going to be back on the clock to take the number four pick right here. While we do have a nice Sparks fan here sending in a nice $2 super chat, Will Robinson saying, LA fan, like Brink, reminds me of Lauren Jackson. That's good. Holy cow. I don't even think about that. I, I think that she's going to be great. And what's really cool about Cameron Brink, a little fun fact here, is that she is actually the goddaughter of, of Dell and Sonia Curry. She is God siblings with Steph Curry. They were actually college roommates. Her mom and Sonia Curry were roommates in college at Virginia Tech, which is where my parents went there as well. Shout out to Ken and Lisa. So Cameron Brink does have a lot of experience being in the limelight. I think she's going to shine in a city like LA. Of course, the Australian basketball player, Lauren Jackson, she could definitely have a lot of similarities there. Maybe even in look, she has a tall blonde, so it does make sense. All right, Kathy's coming in with a number four selection here in the 2024 WNBA draft. Once again, the LA Sparks have this pick, and they will go with Rakia Jackson! The Lady Vol goes to the land of LA. I love this pick. Holy cow, you just got Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson. Holy shit. That is a freaking steal. Look at what she does on offense. Are you kidding me? When you've got 17 and a half points per game from Cameron Brink, and now you're adding on another 20 points per game from Rakia Jackson, you just hit the lottery. Look at her rebound. She is averaging one less rebound per game than Cardoso is, and now you're pairing her up with Brink. This is the best case scenario for Los Angeles. Robinson, if you're listening to me, you better be excited for your team. 48.5% from the field. Obviously, she does take a lot of shots when it comes to her rhythm, but she was in my top five 
and here's why. There are not a lot of players in the NBA, the WNBA, college basketball men or women that can do what they do with their dominant hand just as well with their non-dominant hand. Right or left, it doesn't matter. She is so skilled when it comes to her ball handling skills down low. Here's why I love Rakia Jackson along with Cameron Brink. And as you can see right here, number two and number four, you just picked up your starting five, number four and number three, power and small forwards. Rakia Jackson is a three-level scoring threat. She has a seamless three-point shot. I'm talking like Caitlin Clark. It looks so beautiful when it comes off her hand. She's got the exact arc that you want when it comes to her release point. Obviously, she's not Caitlin Clark. Nobody is, but you get what I'm saying. She is six foot three, along with Cameron Brink, six foot four. If you see the sparks in the finals, I told you so. God, this is a good pickup. So she said that the Sparks are still willing to grow. Like I said, they're looking for a clean slate here. And I think that Rakia Jackson is going to do a lot of damage in L.A. alongside Cameron Brink. I know a lot of you guys in here did want to see Rakia Jackson go in the top five. Well, here you go. She's coming in at number four. Here are the next four picks that are coming up, as well as the Dallas Wings are currently on the clock. And then you got the Washington Mystics. You got the Chicago Sky again. Like I showed you in that trade a little bit earlier, they did just acquire that trade in February from the Minnesota Lynx. So they obviously saw something in that number seven. I am projecting Angel Reese to go here or here. Seven or eight is where I think she will do the most damage for a team like this, which is why I do think she will end up with the Chicago Sky. Sending it back to Will Robinson here. Rakia, pure score with Brink. Female Shaq and Kobe. They're bringing the duo back to L.A., man. It's going to be dominant. If you live in L.A., you don't have to have season tickets. I get it. I don't have any money either. But go to a game. I'm telling you, go to a game. It is going to be insane. They'd be stupid not to put them in their starting five. All right, while the, while the Dallas Wings are on the clock, I do want to go ahead and bring up the Super Chat menu here one more time. And I also want to bring up a little fun fact that I found about Rakia Jackson. Excuse me. Rakia Jackson here is that she is one of two players to have 30 points and 10 rebounds at Tennessee, which is what she did average at one point, which I think is really cool. So she's going to do dominant, dominant things. And... Moving all the way across the country is going to be a transition, which will be super interesting. So I think Rakia Jackson is in the right spot. She's going to enjoy that limelight. Valentine Rogers. God, I love that name. That sounds like a that sounds like a like a character, like a like a good like like romance novel. Like like I saw him across the room. There he is, Valentine Rogers. I love that. Thanks for all the facts. Love the energy. Great that you can say things that you can't say on TV, TV too. Like shit. <laughs> Thank you, Rogers. I appreciate that, man. You got a hell of a name. Cheers to you. And if you haven't already, hit that sub button for me as we got Droz coming in with a $2 super chat as well, saying Reese number 10 to the Connecticut Sun. Once again, I hope you're a Sun fan. I want you to have who you want in the draft, but I don't think Reese is following 10. I truly think it's 7 or 8. I, I think 8 is her lowest. But... I could see there are a lot of players still in this top 12 that need to go. J.C. Sheldon, you've got Nico Mule, Layla Lacan. You've got a lot of international players here coming up that I am excited to talk about, mainly from France, but also from Australia. Alisa Pili, Markeisha Davis, Daisha Fair, Charisma Osborne. I mean, we've got names on names this draft. Thoughts on the Pacers in the postseason? Let's go. A first-time Super Chat coming in from Andrick. And $5 as well. Cheers to you, Andrick. Thoughts on Pacers in the postseason? I'm going to bring my NBA expert back on screen here, Smitty, as I know he's been itching to talk about some NBA hoops here. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I'm letting you roam with it. You are flowing like, a, like, like an animal right I'm now. I'm try, man. Absolute legend. Uh, spitting fire right now you are, Allie. So uh, I guess I'll come I'm in back. for a quick tidbit here to talk about the Pacers. I think the Pacers could give the Bucks some serious trouble. The Bucks don't defend very well. They really aren't uh, one of the t elite defensive teams here in the postseason. Damian Lillard kind of looked like a shell of himself. I'm taking Tyrese Halliburton every day of the week over oh, yeah. him. So uh, 
Basketball in Indiana is on the up and up. Not, not so much on the college level, but in, uh, in the pro sphere. You got Caitlin Clark coming to town on the Indiana Fever, and then the Indiana Pacers, obviously, with Tyrese Halliburton, Pascal Siakam, um, a bunch of other young talent in town there. It, it, it's looking very promising. I think the, the Pacers have a serious shot. Uh, they're far deeper than, Mo than Milwaukee. I think they have a chance to uh, make some noise there in the playoffs and then have a fun series potentially with the New York Knicks or Philadelphia 76 Miami Heat, whoever comes out of that play-in game as well. Absolutely. We actually do have a question for you guys while the Dallas Wings are still on the clock here. Is who is your NBA team or your WNBA team? Let if you us do have know. a $2 super chat coming in from the Proud Nerds Club, I'll go on ahead and give this a quick shout out while he does pull up that question for you guys. Sure, it's sure. hoping this class helps WNBA expand. Miami Soul fan. All right, not bad, not bad. I think it just might. I think it just uh, might. It has to. Like, you even got Paige Beckers, you got Flage Johnson, you've got numerous names who are still in the NCAA Women's League. That is going to still come up. I've been watching Paige Becker since high school. I, I think she's the real deal as well. I mean, if it's not this class, then I don't know what class it could be. Uh, as I got Quentin DeMars coming in here as well. How about Minnesota versus Phoenix? That's a fun series, Cheers. man. That's Going, a hell of a series. While Smitty is uh, bringing that up, I do want to give a quick shout-out here to a lot of people. I got Derek saying Warriors and Fever on top. Wow. Jerome saying Sixers. Ori saying Golden State. Draft Paige in 2025. Wouldn't that be sick? I mean, that Paige Becker's in the first ever team for the Bay Area. The pick is in for Dallas. Here we go. We'll get to all these conversations with you guys in just a second. With the fifth pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, it's going to be J.C. Sheldon. Okay. I'm going to be honest. I didn't see J.C. Sheldon going above Aaliyah Edwards. Of course, Aaliyah Edwards has been dominant for UConn here in the past year, but J.C. Sheldon is definitely going to be a steal of this draft. Coming from Ohio State. Where's my oh, man, Ty Man the Buckeye? Come on, my man. O-H-I-O. -O. Now, I do want to bring up a few things about J.C. Sheldon here, standing about 5'10". She obviously dominated 17.2 points per game, about four assists per game, which is also great, but also 1.9 steals per game obviously the defense is what I'm really looking at here in her draft prospect I want to point out a really cool fun fact here she will probably be the fastest guard in this year's draft if you like fast-paced defense fast-paced offense you're getting a viable two-way player here on your team in Dallas the only downfall is she does have an injury issue she did get hurt she missed 23 games in 2022-23. She did not get hurt last season, which is obviously super exciting. She's a two-time Big Ten all-defensive team. She played all five years at Ohio State. I think when it comes to defense, the Dallas Wings, you can't go wrong here. Allie, we do you think if, if she didn't have that injury concern, would she have potentially gone higher in this draft? Could she have potentially been the second guard off the board? I, I, with, the, with the way that this draft has worked with the names and the talent on it, I actually think five is probably the highest I would have taken her. Just because when I'm looking at the Dallas Wings, here's why I really do like why they took Jace, JC over Aaliyah Edwards is because you're looking mainly at perimeter defense here for this Dallas team. They were one of the worst perimeter defenders last year. And the reason why I actually do like JC now that I'm thinking about it more is because Dallas is loaded in the front court. When you're going to bring in six foot three UConn player Aaliyah Edwards, obviously that's going to be, you know, she's going to be on the bench for a year. She's going to really transition. When you got JC, you got five foot ten, a very scrappy shooting guard that can stop um, start immediately. She can play on ball or off ball as well. I was watching her highlights all night last night, including her run in the NCAA women's tournament. However, the Wings do need some help on offense around the perimeter, and she doesn't really have the best three ball in the draft. Uh, but once again, with what's left here, I could see why they took J.C. Sheldon because they're probably taking her primarily for her defensive assets around the three-point line rather than what she can provide on offense. She is, um, she what? Oh, yeah. Um, she could have declared last season. Obviously, she did take that fifth year of eligibility, which I do think honed in her craft just a little bit. But they also did, uh, excuse me, which actually, we're going to skip that. So 
With the Dallas Wings, I think that she's going to be a really good fit here in the backcourt, which is something that they probably could have added on. So when you're going to get a shooting guard like J.C. Sheldon, you definitely got to steal. I really do believe that. But we do have a lot of super chats that are rolling in here. Let me go on ahead and uh, get to those. I love the WNBA. Go Lynx! Well, your pick is coming up soon. Number eight. We just hit number five. And now we're going to go to on the clock here for number six, the Washington Mystics. Oh, boy, the Mystics need a lot. They got, they got a lot. Droves coming in. Brianna Stewart versus Angel Reese equals exposure. I don't know, man. You can't, you can't knock down Angel Reese, dude. There are a lot of good players in the NCAA women's tournament that Angel Reese did also expose. So I think it's going to be a good matchup. But you're not wrong. I think a lot of college players are going to get a wake-up call when they do hit the WNBA. Sheriff Edie coming in with a nice little $1 super chat. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Coming back in, got Ming Ho coming in here. With uh, love the show, why do you think Luca is being snubbed for the MVP in the media? Answering that question right after Kathy announces the number six pick in the WNBA 2024 draft, the Washington Mystics. We'll go with Aaliyah Edwards. I knew she wasn't going to go that far down. But once again, J.C. Sheldon, a little bit of a steal in the draft here. Aaliyah Edwards, so much to say here. Here's why I love this pick primarily for Aaliyah Edwards is because the Washington Mystics are without Elena Deladane and Natasha Cloud. They have they are sitting out for the 2024 WNBA season. So this is where Aaliyah Edwards can really make an impact as a six foot three power forward coming in here. We've seen what she can do at UConn: 17.6 points per game, 10 boards, almost as much as Camila Cardoso, but she is four inches shorter and 1.7 steals per game. She also averages about 60% from the field, two assists per game. Obviously, her court vision is really, really good. Paige Beckers is in the crowd showing her teammate some love. And as you guys can see in this picture here, I think this is one of the coolest aspects I have seen while doing my research. Aaliyah Edwards wears purple and gold braids. She has for UConn. She will now for the Washington Mystics because she wants to pay her respects to Kobe. She's got the Mamba mentality. I know she's making Kobe very proud. He was a huge advocate for women's sports. So that's a little fun fact. But let's get back to the stats here with the number six pick going to the Washington Mystics and Aaliyah Edwards. The promising stuff that Edwards will bring to the WNBA is her outside shot. I think she has an elite rebounding ability when it comes to defense, and she has great passing instincts, but she also is that power forward, as we've seen, that's not afraid to make a couple of movements in order to make herself open for that outside shot. Aaliyah Edwards is tenacious. She's nasty down low. She's fourth in rebounding in the NCAA women's category, and she has become one of the most versatile defenders in this draft. She knows how to play drop coverage. She knows how to switch on to guards. And when you're guarding somebody like Paige Beckers, Becker, excuse me, day in and day out at practice, you're going to learn how to really be able to switch off these guards primarily. I think that her greatest aspect is going to be her pick and rolls. I think she's going to dominate at the next level because while she may be six foot three in college, doesn't translate that well in the WNBA. She's really going to have to take advantage of those pick and roll moments that she has honed in on in her college career. She can trap guards as far as 30 feet out. I'm looking at you, Caitlin Clark. Aaliyah Edwards knows how to do it, not just from the perimeter defense, but she can take it back even further. Like I said, being in a program that has Geno as a coach at UConn is equivalent to having a program like Don Staley that is going to prepare these girls for the next year. She's very comfortable finisher with both hands, which I do think will be really good and a lot of up and under movements when she is going to be overpowered by a Brianna Stewart, by a Liz Cambage. I do think that when you are six foot three, you do have a lot of power. You can possess in the low post there, but if you want to finish with the right and the left, Edwards can do both. I'm very, very excited to see what she's going to do in Washington. You know, I'm from Virginia. Washington was the closest team for me growing up. I, you know, I never actually went to a WNBA Mystics game, but I think if Aaliyah Edwards is on the team, it's definitely going to provide a lot more attendance as well. She made a name for herself, and they're really looking for an impact player, and you've got it, and somebody that has been through the UConn program. All right, so go on ahead and hit that sub button for me if you guys haven't already. Of course, the Chicago Sky are back on the clock 
Hit that sub button if you guys are excited to see who's going to go here at number seven. It could be Angel Reese. If you guys are excited and you want to see what's going to come next, go on ahead and hit that sub button for me. I got 8,000 people watching here. 2,600 people have liked this video. Go on ahead and hit that like button for me as well. Wow, I got a hot take here coming in from Jess Jefferson Joseph. I see the Aces finishing third this season. The back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champions. You see the Aces finishing third? I mean, they got Asia Wilson. They still got Kelsey Plum. They're still dominant. They're number one in the standings right now. That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. Q Baby saying Angel number seven pick. She could possibly go to the Chicago Sky. Boston Bob spamming Angel as well. Leon Roberson saying, I think a lot of views of the draft is going to go down after Angel gets picked. I don't believe that. I really don't. You're really underestimating the big names that are here in the WNBA draft. I got Daisha Fair next is what people are saying here in the number seven pick. Well, they're still looking for that stretch four and a bigger post player. They did just get Cardosa, which is six foot seven, so you're gonna get that bigger post player at six foot seven for a center, but you're still looking for a stretch four. You're still looking for a lot of assets offensively and defensively finishing around the rim. So I'm telling you, the Chicago Sky traded for this pick, and Kathy's got it. With the seventh pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. Angel Reese is going to the Chicago Sky in the number seven pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. Holy cow. The Chicago Sky made a trade for a reason. You know they were looking at Reese at seven. I think it's time to finally talk about Angel Reese here. She's looking stunning in her sparkly dress, giving a low cut, giving a nice dune headband. And we're going to talk about what the Bayou Barbie has done in her college career. 18.6 points per game last season, 13.4 rebounds per game. She led the NCAA women's in rebounding. Like I said, she also led in offensive rebounding with 5.0 rebounds per game on the O board. 1.9 steals per game. We've seen this time and time again against Caitlin Clark. We have seen this against dominant powerhouses like UConn and Louisville. We know that Angel Reese has very good court vision when it comes to figuring out where the ball is not only going, but where it's going to come next. Her paint scoring ability, especially in the low post, you are getting so much length, so much height, and so much finishing around the rim that I think the Bayou Barbie is going to be perfect in Chicago. I got Disney for the win saying she's quick, she's clutch, she's confident. She is a player that can immediately go into the WNBA and make an impact. And I do think that the Lynx were the worst, they were the re worst rebounding team in 2023, which is why I think you primarily focus on somebody like Angel Reese, but they passed up on her. So it's going to go to the Chicago Sky. They traded up to get Reese. I fully believe that. And it's going to be a really good fit for her in Chicago. Let's see, uh, let's see what our poll said here. As you guys can go ahead and spam Angel in the comment section below. Are you excited for the pro Angel Reese to come to the Chicago Sky? So actually out of 5,000 votes, 40% of you did vote the Chicago Sky, the number seven pick here. I think the lowest she was going to go was eighth with the Minnesota link, but um, obviously that is where she is going to finish. So I got uh, Jerome saying Angel, Dustin saying congrats, Angel, Ashley Bond saying yes, buy you Barbie, baby. I got a uh, SEC Twin Towers in Chi Town. All right. I like that. I really do. Um, that's going to be uh, Cardoso and Angel Reese on the same team. That is a very good lineup. You just got LSU's powerhouse, power forward in South Carolina, recent NBA in <laughs> NCAA Women's Finals champion in Chicago. Patrick Seaman, if you're watching, congratulations, my man. The Minnesota Lynx are now on the clock. I'll be very intrigued to see where the Lynx will take here because I know they had their sights set on Angel Reese. So I think this is where Daisha Fair goes. They need a point guard. They need a point guard bad. And they need three-point shooting. Daisha Fair is your girl, and that's who I'm predicting to go next. 
Let's go ahead and get through some of these super chats here. All right. Sorry. Shout out my guy Ming Ho. We wanted to talk about your question a little bit more. Luca being snubbed by, for MVP by the media, eh, it depends. I mean, listen, you're kind of talking to the wrong guy about that because I am not a Luka Doncic fan. I'm a Boston Cheers, Celtics fan. Uh, shout out Allie with her Flamingo beer bong there. But uh, I, I do think at the end of the day, um, if Nikola Jokic wasn't on the Dallas, uh, the, the Denver Nuggets, excuse me, they'd be a 20-win team. Um, with the uncertainty of the health of Jamal Murray, with not much star power, a lot of great role players there in Denver, I think that Jokic is by far the most valuable player in the NBA. You have the star power of a Kyrie Irving down in Dallas. Now, I'm not saying that they would be a playoff team if you remove Luka from the equation, but I'm just saying that we've seen it from Jokic before. He's proven that he deserves these awards, and he's going to get a third MVP this year. So uh, I'm fine with him getting the award. Luka is going to get his. I'm not saying his one either. I'm saying he's going to get multiple MVPs throughout his career. Just happens to be uh, in the era of Jokic right now, who I like to call the Euro Patrick Mahomes with how dominant he has been over the NBA. A couple right. more Super Chats to get through. Jefferson Joseph, shouts out to that guy. KD Girls. What's good, my slime? What's good, <laughs> dude? How y'all doing? Uh, Sharif Eddy says, this is for you. Y'all sleep on Malaysia? Malaysia full, Wiley. Huh, I, I don't know. We might, we might be sleep. I don't know. I, 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 don't I know. think we, I am I am sleep. We might we might have to be, unless unless that's a, a created name that you just made no, up. No, South Carolina. Okay, uh, okay. She in, the, she in the draft? She in the green room? I didn't think she... She was in the draft. Oh, Dr. Oz. Uh, Dr. Oz with the freezing cold takes that the sky aren't going to pair those two. Well, they did. Angel Reese to Chicago yeah. at pick seven. Full Wiley's not in the draft this year. Okay, okay. Good. Yeah, she, All right, she, we, can, we can sleep until next she's season. She's like a sophomore. All right, bet, bet, bet. We can sleep till next year. Don't, don't worry, my man. Don't worry, my man. All right, as always, feel free to send in a super chat here. Shout I got out a D match with a $5 super chat. I got another uh, poll coming here for you. Here we go. Any super chat? This is how you, you, you say you get your name on screen, your message on screen, dollar sign next to the chat box. Any super chat is going to be a shout out. $5 to we'll talk about your team, talk about the player you want to talk about. No matter what, we'll, we'll, we'll give you the time of day. $10, Allie's going to rip a beer bong. Like and then this. $20 super chats, uh, we're going to rip a beer shotgun. Myself, Allie will rip a beer bong. It's kind of like a two for one deal there with a $20 super chat. So I actually just saw a comment that uh, I actually did kind of forget about this player that could possibly be taken in this eighth pick is Nico Buell. Okay. The UConn point guard that played alongside Paige Beckers. If the Lynx are looking for a point guard, you could either get a huge pick right here with Daisha Fair, the 5'5 five five point guard from Syracuse, or you could go the 5'11 point guard from UConn, who we did know they're looking for three-point shooting. Look at what Mule just did against Iowa. Cooking. In that neck-and-neck neck game, she, she scored the tie-winning three-point shot, which, of course, we all know was then called after Aaliyah Edwards had that moving screen, Ice which is unfortunate. So Nick and Mule could definitely go here. Dr. Oz says that this, this uh, uh, Angel Reese and Cardosa would be a bad matchup, apparently. As so, the Minx, Lynx are about to pick, though. Kathy has the pick. The number eighth pick in the WNBA draft, the Minnesota Lynx are going to select Alisa Pilly. Oh That's my fire. god! That's fire! That's <laughs> fire! Alisa Pilly is fire! What a left field pick if you're looking for a point guard! A small forward, six foot two from Utah! Alyssa, you are going Elite. to Minnesota, and this is not a bad pick at all. Does it fill your needs? Not necessarily just yet, but when you got a player of her caliber, I understand why you got to take her off the spot. You're looking at a pick and pop forward like I have ever seen in the NB WNBA. She is average. Look at her numbers. If you want a point guard, you're getting a score. Absolutely. 21.4 points per game. Six and a half rebounds, shooting 55% from the field. She's also 40% from a three-point line at six foot two. Alyssa, of course, has a lot of muscle on her, so she knows how to body people down in the paint. 
She's always preparing for that extra pass that's going to come towards her. When it comes to finishing at the rim, she is seamless. There are actually a couple of mock drafts out there, and I like this quote the best. Pro talent evaluators. This is where the cons do lie with somebody like Alyssa, because you got to talk about the pros, you got to talk about the cons. Pro talent evaluators don't believe she's long enough to guard WNBA power forwards, or if she's quick and athletic enough to guard splashing pro small forwards. So now, with a chip on your shoulder like Alyssa will have now coming in the WNBA with a with a quote like that, I think Alyssa has done nothing but promote what she can do down low. She dropped 37 against the national title South Carolina Dawn Staley's team. She knows how to score. Is she going to be your ball handler? No. But is she going to put up points for your team? Yes. You still have a missing hole with your point guard, but the three-point shooting does get filled just a little bit. The right shoe's on. You're still looking for your left, but at least you got one shoe on, all right? She is. Uh, the, these are the top four. These are the first four picks that we just saw actually in the 2024 WNBA draft. If you guys do need a recap, while well, I'm still breaking down the eighth pick that just happened, she won the Pac 12 Player of the Year when she was a junior. Her floor spacing availability is what these evaluators are looking at the most. The reason why Minnesota Lynx are taking her is primarily because of what she can do in order to help this offense score. And like I said, she is the former highest drafted pick from Utah. That was in 2006 now, making her the, for, the highest drafted pick in Utah as well. And the really cool fun fact here, Smitty, she's what from do you Alaska. Got for me? Alaska? She, what is it, Alas Alaskan? Oh, Alaskan, I think. Alaskan? Alaskan she's Alaskan? Yes. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um... I think that she she is gonna she's gonna do great, and I, I'm really glad she actually went to Minnesota because I was a little worried she was gonna fall a little bit farther than this. And if she was projected where all the mock drafts said she would have been going to the Connecticut Sun. And the only reason why I really like that she's now going to the Minnesota Lynx is because Connecticut Sun's lineup set; they're, they're not touching it. So anybody that's coming into this draft is going to be on the back burner. They're gonna be ramping up to be able to fill one of those spots if needed. So when you do have somebody. Like Alyssa, you got to be able to take advantage of it right now. The next pick is in. The Dallas Wings are back on the board, and Kathy is going to give the pick. All right, we got our first international player that is going on the board, Carla Late. She is from France. We did know that there was going to be an international player picked in this first round, as they have said numerous times that this is probably the best draft class when it comes to international players. So you did have Pali who just went to the round before this, and now you got late. So what she has done playing in France, 15.6 points per game, 5.5 assists per game as well, and 1.3 steals per game. Obviously, she's playing a different kind of ball. She is playing overseas, but I do think that her skills will translate pretty quickly over to the NBA. WNBA, I apologize if I keep saying NBA. So she is about five foot nine. She'll be a shooting guard here coming in to play for the Dallas Wings. Here's the beauty of it. And here's where she stands out along a lot of these other picks that have just happened. She's 19 years old. She's a baby. She can't even drink when she comes to the States. She can drink in her hometown. You know how pissed I would be? If I'm just cracking bottles of wine in France, eating some cheese, having a good time, and I got to come back to America, and I got to go to a Dallas Wings game, and I can't even celebrate with my teammates afterwards, pish, posh. Here's where she's good. She excels in ball screens. She is phenomenal when it comes to reading defenses and knowing where she needs to be. She was the MVP of the under-20 European Championship last season. She was averaging 18.4 points per game in a seven-game tournament. So, as you guys know in the WNBA, they don't go to seven games. In a lot of these finals and playoff scenarios, they do go to five games. And if not, they go to three. So when you've got a player at 19 years old who is willing to move across the country to follow her dreams, and she's already won an MVP in an international league, which is where some players do have to go who cannot make it to the WNBA. Well, she's coming from the other side of the pond. She did win France's Best Young Player Award at 18 years old. I mean, this girl's been doing it. You've got people who are in the draft right now. Rakia Jackson 
is actually 24 years old, and now you've got people in here who are 19. That's a great pick. Next up is the Connecticut Sun. Kathy's got it on the board. With the 10th pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, the Connecticut Sun are going to go with Another international player. I love it. Layla Lacan is going to go to Connecticut. I think this is going to be a great asset. I was watching her highlights a lot, and I love the way that she attacks the basket. She is a very good low post type of player. And when you have somebody that's coming in the same kind of realm that Lake was coming from as well, she's been around a lot of adult players. She has played with bigger women as well. She's actually... Very dominant when it comes to driving in transition. I, I love this pick a lot for the Connecticut Sun. And like I said, the Connecticut Sun's lineup is already set. So when you're going to have somebody like Lacan come into this lineup, you're going to have her figure it out for a little bit, find her rhythm, especially coming to a, a new team here as well. So I do think this is going to be a very good learning point for her. As she is five foot eleven. She is an international prospect, and she's a versatile two-way guard. That's what's going to make this Connecticut Sun really intriguing. When they've got a starting five, you're now going to add the depth back to your guard position. What's really great about her is that her low post play, like I said, the way that she can move directly to the basket, you're not going to see a lot of mid-range from her, and that's okay because the way that she finishes is what really speaks to me. She's got a good <laughs> off the bounce shot. She understands the assignment. She can work really well in ISO as well. So if you're going to go up there and you want to contest her against the rim, she knows how to put up a power bounce up and go straight up. But if you want to put her in the ISO, don't tempt her on a three-point line. She will take a nice step back and be able to drain it as well from a three-point line. In my opinion, I think she's arguably the best international draft prospect coming to the WNBA since Liz Cambage. I really do believe that. That's putting on a high pedal stool, but I think Lacan can actually do that, and this is probably one of the best international classes ever. So with that being said, I know a lot of you guys are still talking about the people who are left. You got Daisha Fair. You got Nika Mule. There are a ton of people just like Yusuf Spearman coming in here saying $2 to they're sleeping on Nika. So they're sleeping on me, Nika. I know. It's tough, especially coming from that UConn program. I mean, you know they bred. Brianna Stewart. You know they bred Diana Taurasi, so this it, is tough. I, I completely agree, but I think Nika is going to get her, her time. Absolutely. Um, her stock is it rose after the UConn versus Iowa game for sure, so we're, we're going to get there. Don't you guys worry, but let's go on ahead and bring up that super chat menu here. One more, excuse me, Ming Ho coming Ming in Ho. saying, is this USA team for the Olympics looking more stock than the 2012 Redeem team? So let me tell you. That's that's. Let, let me tell you, this team is absolutely insane. I'm going to read off this roster to you, and you just react to me. Oh. Steph Curry, LeBron, Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Joel Embiid, playing for the USA, by the way, Devin Booker, Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Edwards, Drew Holiday, Bam Adebayo, and Anthony Davis. Not going to lie, my guy Drew Holiday kind of sticks out like a sore thumb on that roster because that is straight all-star starter, all-NBA-level potential players. But hey, Drew Holiday is hell of a leader, hell of a defender, and he makes the right decisions a lot of the time. So I, I understand why he's been on the team. He's been on the team a couple of times. That, as far as pure talent goes, it's the most talented um, Olympic team that that's ever been assembled. I don't care about the redeemed. I don't care about the dream team. I don't care about the redeemed team. Basketball is at such a high level right now that this is the most talented Olympic roster that we'll ever see. And guess what? The following Olympic roster that we see is going to be even more talented than this one. Maybe. I don't know. LeBron, KD, Steph, they might be retired or at least retired from international play by then. So who knows if that's uh, – this might be the most stacked roster that we ever get for the Olympics. Now, All right. Let's, let's go back to the Super Chat menu. Let's go back to the Super Chat menu. I got 4,600 people in this stream with me. I got 2,900 likes. Go on ahead and hit that like button for me. We appreciate let's see it. if we can get to 3,000 here by the end of the first round of the draft. We are currently at pick number 11, which is going to the New York Liberty. Going to join Sabrina Anescu, Brianna Stewart, and the recent WNBA Finals Co uh second place, I should say. They lost to the WNBA finals. What is that? What is that? Uh runner up. Runner up. Thank you. I knew there was a word for it, but what are you gonna do about it? All right, here's our super chat menu. I've done one beer bong. I am willingly ready to do a second. $20 for a shotgun. 
Fifty dollars, a hundred. We accept it all. If you want me to punch me in the face, that's a hundred. You know, I don't want to. I'll like... throw out. I'll throw out a deal for you guys. Cool. If we get a hundred dollar super chat, I'm doing a beer boot. That's three beers in one giant ass boot. I'll put it down here. I'll do it live. I'll shotgun. I'll tear it up live. I I'll, I'll shotgun along with you. I'm not Woo! gonna let you drink. I don't let friends drink alone. That's just honestly rude. But all right. What are you gonna do? Next four picks, though. Next four picks in this draft. We got uh. My New York Liberty. Uh -huh. Let's go. My, my New York Liberty back right. home. All New right. York native. All right. So the New York Liberty is really looking for some defensive assets here. They got They're the looking, offense. They got, they got, they got the offense. They got John Quill Jones. They got Sabrina Inescu. They got Brianna Stewart, who they tra trade for. They Sweet. got Vander Sloot, which is, I think I believe it's Courtney Van Vander Sloot. Vander Sloot's tough. Vander Sloot's tough. I, I, I think it's Courtney. Maybe here we go. The pick's right. in. The pick is in. All right. So. Let's see who they take here with the 11th pick in the WNBA draft, the New York Liberty, who was the runner-up in the 2024, 2023 WNBA Finals. Marquisha Davis! All right, I love you're going to have to educate me, Allie. I absolutely love this pick. I think this is exactly what they're needing, especially if you're looking for somebody with defense. You're going to be looking at an Ole Miss Rebel. Coming to Rebel. the Big Apple. I, I really do like this. I think what Marquisha has done specifically for the Ole Miss uh, Rebels here, is that she set career-high points, assists, and steals this season. And I do understand that when you're looking at somebody that's six foot, she is a small forward here, 14.0 points per game, 4.7 rebounds per game, and about 1.7, 1.5 steals per game. She's also got about 45% from the field goal. So when I am looking at her, I do want to point out that with her defense, it's not going to fill exactly what the New York Liberty is looking for. She did play three seasons at Arkansas, and then she moved to Ole Miss. So she has played in some SEC powerhouses. So it is great to see her now moving up to a little bit on the East Coast. They're going up north. But she'd have eight 20-point performances this season, 25 double-figure games this season as well. When you're looking at a defensive aspect, I don't know if I would have taken Davis for that, but when you're going to add on to the offensive, absolutely. You're going to you're gonna really compliment a John Quell Jones. You're really going to compliment Sabrina Inescu here. She eclipsed 1,000 career points this last season. She was first team all SEC. She doesn't have nearly as many accolades as some of the girls earlier in the draft have gone, but obviously when you're going to be taken – your 11th and 12th pick. And you got to remember, the Storm and the Aces don't have a pick in the first round. So I do think that with Markeisha Davis, you're going to get a very reliable small forward here um, to add on to more of what that offense has. When you're looking at perimeter defense, maybe not so much, but I do know the Liberty was looking at adding some all-around depth. So at that position, you're good. You got a good person that's going to come off the bench for you. She will not be in the starting lineup, especially not in her rookie season. But I do think that um, she is going to add on to a super team that they built last winter when they did go on ahead and get Brianna Stewart. So they made the finals since the first time since 2002 last year. And I do believe that Marquisha Davis is not definitely, definitely not going to hurt them trying to get there in the next year. She'll definitely... Um, Help them get back there as well. But Marquisha Davis is going to go with the 11th pick as we are now officially on the last pick of the WNBA 2024 draft. You got to remember, what did I say? Oh, I said draft. Uh, first round, excuse me. No, we got two more rounds. So I do want to highlight real quick here. I don't think I ever got to say this was who is actually at the draft. They only invite 15 players to come and really embrace this moment in person so we do have that people who are there it does of course include Markeisha Davis it's got Pooch of Australia Daisha Fair Markeisha Davis you got Alyssa Pilly JC Sheldon Celeste Taylor who is still a huge steal on the board Charisma Osborne Nikia Mule Aaliyah Edwards Cardoso Kitley Elizabeth Kitley of my Virginia Tech Hokies who did unfortunately drop to the second round because she did tear her ACL in the Regular season. I don't really, I don't think the Atlanta Dream is really where she goes. The Atlanta Dream does need everything. Uh, yeah, the Atlanta Dream. Uh, Atlanta Dream ain't so good. If you actually want, I do have the standings there if you want to update the people on where everybody's kind of at right now. They're looking at a lot of point guard and, and a little bit of front court depth. So they could add somebody like 
a Kitley to their to their roster, but you want a three point shooter. So would the two guards are still there? I, I do think that a uh, Celeste Taylor would probably go over somebody like an Elizabeth Kitley. But I got Cedric Murray saying I can see Nico with Reese and Cardoso for the sky with a triple threat. I, I don't blame you at all. I think that offense would be great when you're looking at the second round. They do have the first pick in the second round. Then they do, I believe, that is their last pick. So if you want to take Nika Mule with your last pick, I think I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I love Mule. I think she'd be the offensive asset to really complement the powerhouse you've built in the front court. With the 12th pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, the last pick of the first round, the Atlanta Dream is going to select Nadu Couch. She is from Australia. She is one of the international players here. As um, I do, I do hope I am I am pronouncing it correctly. I apologize. I try to find a pronunciation on this as well. So it's called Nadio Pouch. That is uh, that Nadio Pouch. Okay, so Nadio, I I knew was gonna go in the top the top twelve, which means you left a lot of good talent out there in the second round, but you're not skimping at all with a pick like this. Her stats I, I, I are think, a little weak, though. Uh, as so, far as but, I'm but here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, it, the defense is what I'm looking at here. It's primarily transition defense is what you're going to get here with Nidia. So when she does play in Australia, she, of course, is at once again 19 years old, playing in the Women's National Basketball League, who has won a championship in the last two seasons. You are looking at a transition defender. However, like you said, Smitty, when you're looking at her stats here, 6.1 points per game, one assist per game. Offensively, she extremely struggles. Limited. Which, Limited. Which is going to provide minimal moves in her bag yeah. moving into the next league. Let's but see. you got to think Oosh. it's it's kind of tough with the international players. She might be able to stretch the floor though. I've been seeing some. I saw some outside shooting right there. She does. She does have some in her bag. She, she's also a really good solid off ball defender. Okay. And she knows how to swallow up those offensive players when they do tend to drive to the basket. So I'm looking at defense here when you're getting the Australian native. The comment that I did find from her, of course, these international players, you can only tell from their highlights. We haven't had an opportunity to see her in person yet, but I do think that her combination of athleticism and length and her basketball IQ is going to really translate into the WNBA. The fact that she's 19 doesn't mean she has to start. It means that she okay. can provide okay. some depth for a player like the Atlanta Dream, and when you're going to take her in the 12th pick, in the first round, you're not taking her to immediately make yeah. the Atlanta Dream a playoff you're game. You're banking on some upside You're banking upside on there. what you can see her doing. In think five about years. it. Think, think about it in two years. Yeah, She's going to be know. 21. Yeah. I Absolutely. think that you just drafted for the future, which is not bad for somebody like the Atlanta Dream who kind of needs to fill so many boxes. Why don't you rebuild and then fill in possibly with some trades down the line? I think that she is projecting to have – a, a very positive impact for the Atlanta Dream more than anybody else in the WNBA that's going to be in this draft right now. So with that being said, she does conclude the first round of the 2024 WNBA draft. If you guys haven't already, I got 4,400 people in here. Hit that sub button for me. We are about 15 likes away from hitting our goal of 3,000 likes before the end of the first round, but I'll give you guys this little leeway here as well. All right. Recapping the first round of the 2024 WNBA draft, of course, my girl, Caitlin Clark, went number one, which actually feels like nine years ago because this, this, this first round did take a while. She went first to the Indiana Fever. Cameron Brink went number two to the Los Angeles Sparks. I think they're getting an absolute steal here at number two. It was between her or Cardoso. They took the right pick. They got their stretch four. They're going to have a really good time with Cameron Brink in the spotlight in L.A., plus the fact that they added Rakia Jackson, the Lady Vol, the Jason Tatum of the WNBA. I'm claiming her as that. Nobody else can steal it. That's going to be elite in Los Angeles. Camilla Cardoso will go to the Chicago Sky, which is where she will really work well with number seven, Angel Reese, who was taken by the Chicago Sky as well. You got not only a center, but you also picked up a very strong power forward, rocking about six foot seven and six foot three. The Chicago Sky, the Twin Towers, have now entered the city of Chicago. Aaliyah Edwards, who I predicted to go number five, went number six. J.C. Sheldon, getting yourself a good shooting guard there for the Dallas Wings, ending it in the eighth pick is Alyssa Pilly. 
I think she's going to do some damage there with the Minnesota Lynx. You got two, three international players that went in the bottom three of the first round of the WNBA draft. You got Carla Late, Lacan, and you got Nedui. And you got Markeisha Davis, who is going to go to the New York Liberty, who was the runner-up here in the WNBA finals of last season. Of course, the picks that are coming up still have so many names left to go. I asked you guys who is winning the draft so far, and 60% of you said Chicago Sky. You said 40% the LA Sparks. I got a new poll for you. Who is the best left? I got a, I got a couple names here for you guys that I think you are really going to enjoy. All right. You got Nika Mule. You got Daisha Fair. You got Elizabeth Kitley, who did have, unfortunately, a season-ending injury that will keep her out of this upcoming season, which is why her draft stock did plummet, which is unfortunate. And the sky are back on the clock already? The sky are back on the clock. It does go by fast. So, okay, so did the, the Storm... So do not, does not every team get a first-round pick? Because the Storm didn't have a first-round pick there. The Storm and the Aces did not have a first-round pick. They either made trades in previous off-seasons oh, that see. did give up some of their picks, and the Aces, who are back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champions, obviously don't need a lot oh, okay. to add to their addition. So yeah. they could have definitely given up some draft picks to I primarily see. get somebody like an Asia Wilson. I was about to say, that makes sense, because Vegas traded away the 12th pick to Atlanta. And then uh, this is how L.A. got back in the top four. That's why Seattle yep. is, uh, is up there. They, uh, they trade away their fourth overall pick yep. to the Sparks. Very fun, very fun. I'm, I'm interested to see. Uh, maybe maybe Daisha, Daisha Fair goes to Chicago, and they just have a triple threat. Well, that's why I asked here in this poll. Already has 400 votes. 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 Is uh, Nika Mule obviously is the overall draft prospect that they want to go to the Chicago Sky. And you can't go wrong here. When you add South Carolina, LSU, and UConn to the same team, who's beating them? Who is beating them? No, I mean, that's, that's greatness right there. That's winning. So I want to double check the Chicago Sky roster here right now because I do know that they used to have Vander Sloot on their roster who did go to the New York Liberty which, um, but I know that she has a sister, and I want to double check if that sister is still on um, that team. Hold on, give me one second, real quick. As we do have 370,709 subscribers, hit that sub button for me if you guys have not already. I promise you are not going to regret it. All right, let me see if I got a Vander Sloot on here. So, I don't have a Vander Sloot anymore. They got Elizabeth Williams. Diamond to Shields. That is a fantastic addition that you're going to have there in Chicago Sky. Dana Evans as well. Uh, Brianna Turner could definitely be making some impact there. So when you're looking at the height of the Chicago Sky roster right here, the smallest player is going to be five foot six. Their tallest player is going to be six foot three. So you've already added Cardoso at six foot seven, and you've added Angel Reese, another six foot three player, making her the fourth six foot three player on this roster. So obviously you've got a starting center there with Cardoso. You've got a power forward in Angel Reese that could start immediately as well. And here's what's really cool about it is that the youngest player on this team is 24. So you're going to add some younger girls here to the roster as well. The oldest is going to go all the way up to, you got two players in their 30s, a couple players in their 29. So as you guys know, doesn't sound very old on paper, but when it comes to professional athletes, you got a window. So I do think that adding a Nakia Mule is going to solidify the Chicago Sky's run to the WNBA Finals right now. They, they are. Um, she does have – no, no, I am a fan of Nika, but I do know that she does have some cons w when you're going to have her. But here's the thing is that you're, you're getting mainly a defender here. And I do, li I do love – Nika Mule, who can drain a three like we've seen it. She primarily works better in ISO when it comes to her three-point shooting. She is a two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. If you want shooting, you're, you're going to get you're gonna get Daisha Fair. If you want defense, because he put it in perspective for you here, I found this little, little aspect. When you're looking at two of the best shooters in the NCAA women's history, it's Daisha Fair and Caitlin Clark, who are now both in this draft. Nikia Mule held Daisha Fair to two first-half points 
in the second round of the NCAA Women's Tournament. She held Caitlin Clark to six first half points in that Iowa versus UConn matchup. So Mule's got moves in her defensive bag. But if you're looking for offense, Kathy, so so in the second round, they don't have enough players there, so they are actually just going to go on ahead and show their picture on the screen, and they do eventually do end up giving them a a um a uh, a jersey as well. So Brianna Maxwell is going to go tier to the Chicago Sky, which she did average about fourteen point two points per game in her her in this last season that she played. She's from Gonzaga who's more of a powerhouse when it comes to men's basketball than it is to women. But I do think that when you got somebody like Brianna, you are going to be able to get a little bit more height there as well. She's about six foot, so you're adding to that middle of the roster. I'm going to be honest, I don't love this pick. I don't love it because... Feels like a bit of a reach. I, I think maybe you can craft her into who you want her to be. But when you've got two really good guards on the board, you're going to go for a shooting guard from Gonzaga. I just don't believe this is where I would go because when you look at who's left, it, it, Nakia Mule is obviously the number one. Daisha Fair is probably the number two. You've got multiple people ahead, and then you're going to find Brianna Maxwell. Um, yeah, not my favorite pick, I'm going to be honest. I, I think that they could have done better here. I think that you're getting somebody that didn't even have, you know, the best shooting year in her senior year right now. So she did play all five years for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. She averaged about 14.2 points, which is a career high for her, but she never got over 14 points. So ultimately her three-point percentage was better her junior year than it was her senior year. I don't have much on her because I didn't think her game was somebody that was going to take her in the first round of the second, the, the second round. So in the first pick of the second round. So, nonetheless, Brianna Maxwell will go to the Chicago Sky. That will end their picks here, which when you take somebody like that, I think you have now given the LA Sparks the trophy for the WNBA draft. Okay. You think, you see, you think it's a miss, a misstep uh, on that's Chicago? A miss. I think that's a miss for uh, – Okay. Let, it, for, let, it, let us know. Let us know. What, 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 do we, what do you guys think? Did they make the right pick there? Yes or no, it was. Now my favorite, not when you've got a good fit in there like Nikia Mule, that you're going to go for somebody like a shooting guard, which is the, the you know primarily the same position here as Mule. What do you guys right? think? Let us know in the chat if they made the right pick. Uh, I'm not going to go with that one. I, I do think that their front court is still very stacked. The back court, you could have really elevated right here. They did also trade away. Skylar Diggins-Smith did not resign in oh. free agency. The uh, Notre Dame the legend. Seattle's... What? Right? That's the, the Notre oh, Dame oh, legend. Oh, Sky yeah, Skylar Dickens. Smith. I love Skylar Dickens. So Diggins. now with the with the Seattle Storm here, Kathy's going to come back on here, which oh, means so they're going to take somebody yeah. who's at the draft. Here we go. The best pick here is Aisha Fair. Best fit. Nick Mule is going to go to the Seattle Storm with pick number 14 of the WNBA draft round two. two as tears finally do come to Nika Mule's eyes, she absolutely deserves this. Um, and you know what? I'll be honest. I think because this pick came in so quick, I don't think they were expecting the Chicago Sky to pass up on Nika Mule. Let's talk about her. Let's talk about the defensive asset you're going to be getting here. As you guys can see, offensively, 6.9 points per game. You got about 6.5 assists. Court vision is incredible. She didn't need, she didn't need to score. Joe's calling her the Secretary of Defense. Yes, you didn't need to score as much with Paige Beckers on your team. So I think that she really elevated her defense here, and that's what you're going to be getting. She did shoot 40% from a three-point line, though, which I will absolutely take. She is the UConn Huskies' all-time assist leader, which will do damage her first year in the WNBA. Quick little fun fact here. She shoots 40.2% from a long-range shot. She knows how to knock down threes, from way downtown, which is going to be one of her main assets going up against bigger guards here. She held Syracuse's Aisha Fair to two first half points in the second round. She held Caitlin Clark to six first half points 
in the UConn versus Iowa game in the Final Four. Both rank inside the top five of women's college basketball all-time scores. You are getting a steal in the draft. And I do believe that because this draft is so stocked, she could have gone first round immediately. But you're looking for defense. You're going to get it. The Secretary of Defense is going to be Nika Mule. Yusuf says the Secretary of Defense, Nika, let's go. I'm glad you're happy about it, my man. That's, that, that's exciting. Sleeping on it. They were sleeping on it way too long, man. Way too long. 73% of you guys said in the poll that this was your girl. All right. This is a good, this is a good question to do before, uh, before the Indiana Fever comes. We kind of get a reset here, right? Yep. Uh, we, and we know the, the Vegas Aces haven't picked yet. But we kind of get a reset here We're going back to all the way back to number one at pick 15, the Indiana Fever. Caitlin Clark's going to get a running mate here as Kay Wright comes in with the $2 Super Chat and says, who's your favorite pick so far? Uh, mine is Rakia Jackson. Okay. With the fact that the LA Sparks have you say, a, you're saying the LA Sparks knocked this draft out of the park I, I, so I'm far. still so on board with what the LA Sparks have done. Yes, you just elevated the Sky's front court, but I do think that when you're going to get an all-around player like Rakia Jackson, I do think that when you've got number two and number four, you picked up the best absolute picks here for their team specifically. You're going to be getting a three-level threat when it comes to a shooter. Coming from Rakia Jackson, you are getting the all-time block leader this season in men and women's NCAA basketball with about three and a half blocks a game. You got Cameron Brink down low. You can put Rakia Jackson at your small forward position, and I think you're set. You got your PF, you got your SF, and I think that the Los Angeles Sparks, Rakia Jackson is my favorite pick so far. I, I wasn't expecting the duo like that. And I like somebody that. said, you're bringing a Shaq and Kobe. Back to L.A. So I, I do, obviously not to that par, but you get what I'm saying. In <laughs> hey, terms, hopefully it is. To, hopefully it you is. Do, oh, but you, want, you, you get the analogy where you got a big girl down low and you're going to get another lethal shooter around that mid-range three-point line. So I am very excited for that as well. Next four picks are going to be the Fever, the Aces with their first pick of the draft, the Liberty back on the board, and the Aces again. So two picks in the second round for the Las Vegas Aces, the reigning WNBA champions. You know what's really cool? That was Seattle Storm's first pick. What do you mean? In the, in the draft. Oh, the, 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 uh, Nika Mule? Nika Mule. Yeah. That's a hell of a pick for your first. Uh, so, imagine, imagine, imagine looking at this year's draft lineup and you're like, shit, we don't even have a first round draft pick. Who the fuck are we going to get? And you got Nika, Nika Mule, Mule sitting at Somebody who round win, two, pick number 14. Could have went top eight, top 10 potentially. Come on, man. Easy. All right, so the Indiana Fever are back on the board as Kathy's going to come out and give uh -oh, the next so is pick. This, is this Who's fair? Who's joining Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark with the 15th fair? pick in the 2024 WNBA draft? The Indiana Fever are going to select Celeste, Celeste Taylor. Taylor. Okay. All right, okay. so they're not going to go with a double guard here. They're actually going to pick up my girl Celeste Taylor, which I do not hate at all. Celeste Taylor, you're going to be getting a, a nice little point guard here with from Ohio State, five foot eleven. They are stacking up with guards, but not with Daisha Fair that I did see. So you got to remember, five eleven is what Celeste Taylor is. Five foot five is what Daisha Fair is. Not that Daisha Fair doesn't have the skills, but you're adding a little bit of height here yeah. next to six foot. Different Taylor player. Court. Different player. Different skill set. So with Celeste, you are going to get ten point one points per game. 3.4 assists per game, and 2.5 and steals per game. When you're looking at a perimeter defender, you're looking at Celeste Taylor. This is the best perimeter defender in the WNBA draft, hands down. But she is about one-dimensional. She was the 2023 ACC Defensive Player of the Year. So now you've added offense, and now you're going to get the – I'll talk in a minute – the um, You got the offense with Caitlin Clark. Now you're going to get the defense with Celeste Taylor, and she has played for three powerhouses here. She's played for Duke, she's played for Texas, and she played for Ohio State. So you're getting a very beautiful Latina woman to come to Indiana. She's very, she's very um, uh, outspoken. She loves talking about her Latina culture. She loves bringing up the fact that she wants to make 
other Latina women be able to see what she can do and do it well in the professional level. So I love that she embraces her Latina culture. She'll now be able to bring that to the Indiana Fever and keep encouraging other Latina younger women to be able to do what she has done here as well. So I think that you got your offense. Now you got your defense with Celeste Taylor. I love this pick. You could have gone... You could have gone offensive guard and guard with Daisha Fair and Caitlin Clark, but instead you went the other side of the ball and you got the best perimeter defender in the WNBA draft. A huge steal here for the Indiana Fever. Holy shit, Caitlin Clark and Celeste Taylor. If you're not watching the WNBA this upcoming season, what the fuck are you doing? This is incredible. I love this. I absolutely love what they have done here so far. Well, there are still three really good players, well, numerous players, but the three in my poll, Daisha Fair, Elizabeth Kitley, and Charisma Osborne, are also still on the board as well. Uh, Har Harewood saying, I thought Connecticut might have gone for Nika. That would have been nice, but that has me wishing, but she, I thought she'd come higher. I do as well, but now uh, the Las Vegas Aces are able to take their first pick in the 2024 WNBA draft. Fair has still not been drafted. So when you do look at the best available according to ESPN, it does look like the Las Vegas Aces are on the clock. The best available is going to be Daisha Fair, but the best fit for the Aces is going to be Payo. I do not believe I'm saying that correctly, so I'll have to see the um, how they pronounce her, but her first name is Helena, the point guard from Arizona, the, um, the really good 3 and D player here for Arizona could possibly be going to the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back champions, the Las Vegas Aces. All right, while we are in a commercial break, talk to me, baby. What's going on? I need you guys to go ahead and keep this chat flowing here. I need some comment sections going. I need some likes going. If I've got energy, then you do too. We are just halfway through the second round. You got to keep it going here for the rest of the second round and the third. There are still really good players left here in this draft. Perfect. All right, so there are 370,000 subscribers, 806. Let's get to 371,000. How about that? So my favorite of you guys, hit that sub button. If we hit 371,000 subscribers before the start of the third draft, beer bong. I'll do a shotgun. Beer shotgun. I'll shotgun with you, Smitty. Oh! Pull my leg. I'll do it. I'll do it. All right, let's pull up our super chat, and then you hear as well. I got 3,800 people watching. 3,100 have liked it. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't liked the video, go on ahead and hit it. Hit that sub button you for me as well. You guys been killing it. We, I mean, this viewership is crazy. You guys are feeling the exact same thing we're feeling here with one of the best WNBA draft classes we have ever seen before. Allie's saying we haven't seen Smitty in a minute. I think what up? What up? I love it, man. All right. Who wants to see Smitty and I get wasty pants? How about that? How would you guys like to see? So he goes by the blind bucket. That is oh. his uh, That is his nickname when he plays basketball. And he does have a chat sports basketball game later tonight. Who wants to see Smitty play drunk? I could be a little tipsy on the hardwood. Want to make uh, his vision even worse? Send in a super chat. Oh, let's, man. I, have, and I little, haven't played in a while, Let's too. get a little drunk here, shall it we? Would, <laughs> it would kind of be a disaster, not going to lie. All right, go on ahead and send in your super chats here. Ten dollars for a beer bong, twenty dollars for a shotgun race, five dollars to talk about your WNBA or NBA team, or let me know if there's a WNBA team that you would like to be a fan of. I can give you some some resources on that as Hell yeah. well. Oh yeah. Katanda saying this has been really great coverage, great work, you guys. Thank you so much. This is our first time ever doing it. Um, Breaking that, barriers at Chat Sports. Shout out to Brett Scott, James Yoder, and the rest of everybody at Chat Sports that let us do this. Uh, I'm, I love my job. It's been extremely fun. Um, it's been awesome. It's been super fun. It's even more fun when we have you guys here that have been supporting us the way that you guys have. So, 3,600 uh, people in this chat right now. Other ways you could support the stream tonight, if you love the WNBA. Like today's video helps out the stream a ton. Helps us reach more viewers. Um, expand this party as the second and third round of this draft continue. Um, the Las Vegas Aces are picking their first uh, selection of this draft. Got the Liberty coming up after that. The Aces back on the board. So they're kind of probably deciding between two picks. Maybe thinking about who potentially uh, New York might want here. And making sure that if they wanted them to potentially two picks later, they're going to take them right here at 16. Yep. All right. So... Hit that like button for me as we do have uh, Caitlin Clark on the ones and twos here on ESPN, giving her update on what it means to be wow. the number one overall draft pick here. Obviously, as you guys know, the Indiana Fever's ticket prices have 
skyrocketed. Even the opponents. Like, we live in Dallas, and, and the, the, the tickets to even go see the Dallas Wings versus the Indiana Fever are, are incredible. Yeah it's, a, yeah, it's the most expensive WM, WNBA ticket I've ever seen, and that's a testament to the player that Caitlin Clark is. Yeah, so it, it, there's still a lot of great names here on the board. You got Charisma Osborne, Elizabeth Kitley, Jessica Carter, Daisha Fair, who I need to see go very soon, Leilani Keora. I'm very excited to see this Florida guard go. She's six foot, and she could be a steal in the WNBA draft. Mackenzie Forbes, Tiana Jackson, Isabel Borales, Abby Yu, Mackenzie Holmes from Indiana. You got the, you got the Indiana girls. Scalion Holmes still haven't gone. You've got the Colorado weapons as well. You've got Jalen Sharon, who hasn't gotten yet as well. The five foot seven Colorado guard, the second leading scorer for Colorado this past season. Quay Miller also coming in, six foot three from Colorado. My girl, Kiki Jefferson. She went to JMU, which is where I graduated from. She transferred to Louisville this last year to really up her stock in the draft. Kiki Jefferson will also be a steal in the third round. There are numerous names to still get through here, and I promise we are just getting into the thick of it. So if you guys want, go on ahead and send in a super chat. Get us drinking. If you guys are drinking with us, let us know what you're drinking Come down on. below as we're going to keep this party rolling. Let's hit it. Super Chat menu is up. That's how you get your, your, your thoughts, your takes on the show today. Any Super Chat, we'll put your message, your name up on the screen like we have been doing all stream long. We want to drink, want to have a good time. And uh, if you send the $5 Super Chat, we'll give you a little bit more time, maybe have a little bit of conversation about whatever you want to talk about as far as the NBA, WNBA, college basketball. We're hoop heads here at Chat Sports, and we'd love to hear from you. So if you guys want, uh, I saw Frozen Tundra Edits says, who went the top 10? I missed those first rounds. So we can go back over those top 10 draft picks here with you if you did miss out on what happened here. Um, TD Sports Card saying, first round recap, please. I got you. No problem at all. We can actually pull that up here right now what we, to do what a first round recap. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's, let's do a little first round recap. Why not? So, obviously, Caitlin Clark did go first with the Indiana Fever. We all knew she was going to go first. And we got Cameron Brink, a very up-in-the-air decision for the Los Angeles Sparks. Camila Codoso going to go third the Chicago Sky. Rakia Jackson went fourth. The Lady Vol is now going to Dynamic Los duo. Angeles. I love it. That's my favorite duo right now. You got J.C. Sheldon rocking the number fifth pick to the Dallas Wings. Aaliyah Edwards, the UConn great, to the number six round one. Angel Reese ended up going seventh to the Chicago Sky. Alyssa Pilly to the Minnesota Lynx with the number eighth pick. Carla Late is going to go to the Dallas Wings international player as well as Lacan who is going to go to the Connecticut Sun, an international player. Markeisha Davis to the New York Liberty, the runner-up here in the 2023 WNBA Finals. And then you got Nadia Pooch, who is from Australia. She went the last pick in the first round to the Atlanta Dream. All right, looks like the Las Vegas Aces have their pick in here. They are going to go on ahead and get... First here on the board, the first time in this WNBA draft. They've got pick number 16 in round two. We have about 20 more picks left to go. 36 picks in total in all three rounds here. 12 picks a round. Kathy's, Kathy's back. back. Let's go! Board. In the 2024 WNBA draft, the Las Vegas Aces take the 16th pick. They're going to go with Daisha Fair. There we go. Fair is off the board, baby. My number two prospect in this WNBA draft. I'm telling you, she went 16th because she is five foot five, which is kind of unfortunate. But spam Fair down below. Let's get this comment section rolling. I want you guys to show Fair some love. I think she is absolutely phenomenal. And I'm going to tell you guys why I think so here in just a few She'll moments. She's a bucket so, getter, 22 a game. Holy stuff cow. Stuff in the stat sheet. I will be honest. When you're getting a lot of spotlight like Caitlin Clark is, it is well, well-deserved the spotlight that she got. But look at Daisha Fair. She is third all-time Division I women's scorer with 3,403 baskets made, 22.3 points per game, five rebounds per game, and two and a half steals. Come on. She's a two-time All-ACC first-team player. She led the ACC in three-point field goals with 115 and three-point attempts 
with 305. She also led the ACC with her stat in steals, which is 2.4. She got a high, arcing, long three-point shot that I love. And she never averaged lower than 19.9 points per game in five seasons for Syracuse. That is insane. The lowest career low for her is 19 Point nine points. A 20-point game is a career low for her, is what she's averaging. And her 22.3 points per game is actually eighth in the country, men and women's. So when I'm looking at a player like Daisha Fair, here's why I love her. It's because she is a crafty ball handler. She understands that she is 5'5", five five, so she's going to have taller defenders guarding her. She likes to use her angles against those taller defenders. She can get hot at any moment, but... The big question, which is why I do think she went to number 16, but you got to think she's going to the best team in the WNBA, the Las Vegas Aces, the back-to-back-to-back Kelsey Plum, Asia Wilson duo that is currently in Las Vegas. The cons. Will her game translate to the WNBA? UConn forced her into five turnovers. She struggled to score efficiently from the field, only shooting 40% or better once in her career. So, Obviously, she's going to take a lot of shots, but not a lot are going to go in. So, actually, I have I have had the privilege of watching Daisha Fair in person. She played for Buffalo when I was a student reporter at JMU. I watched Daisha Fair many a times. This is an incredible two-way player that you're about to get. The way that she knows how to make the pass at the right time goes to show that her court vision is unlike any other. She may be 5'5". Five, five. I got a couple of super chats earlier talking about Muggsy Bogues, and I understand that height. Obviously, you can't help with, but what she does is still a very scrappy offensive player, and I think she is going to do phenomenal with the Las Vegas Aces. That's pick number 16. We're going on to number 17 here. Pick As the New in. York Liberty already has the pick in. We're flying here, and here comes Kelly. Oh, Kathy. no, no, Kat, Kathy's not out. Kathy's not coming this time. Kathy. Mary Martinez is going to go from the University of Arizona. Uh, not 100% sure that I agree with this one. I'm going to be honest. Uh, was not in my bag to have this. And I'm going to be honest, New York Liberty has made two pretty questionable picks here for me. I'm not sure I'm going to – I really – I really do like this, but with the pick number 17, which is already in. What the pick hell? Pick number 18, the Las Vegas You're Aces kidding. already coming back in here. I told you, man, they move. Kate Martin is going to go to the Las Vegas Aces. They got Daisha Fair from Syracuse, and now they're going to get the Iowa legend six-foot Kate Martin. I love what Kate Martin has brought to the floor. Smitty, you've watched Kate Martin as well play for Iowa here. She's averaging 13.1 points per game, but nearly seven boards per game. She's a really solid finisher around the rim. She really is. And, and what's really great is that there aren't a lot of bigger women in the college women basketball sphere. So, sphere. so in the WNBA, she's going to be going up against a lot bigger women than her, and she holds her own. She's very solid. She's a very gritty player as well, a very gritty guard, which is super nice. She's been extremely consistent over the last couple of years as they've been making their run. And she's been known as the glue, the glue for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And that's saying a lot for somebody that has a team with Caitlin Clark on it. I believe that Martin always finds herself to be in the right position at the right time. And if you're playing with somebody like Caitlin Clark, I understand that your court vision is going to be elite because you've got a high basketball IQ player as your point guard. And then next thing you know, her shooting guard right next to her as they do have a they do have a couple of teammates that are currently in the stands cheering her on right now. I think that her career her career uh, three-point percentage is 35.5%. I think that's another weapon in her arsenal, and I think she's going to do great here with what she has done in 163 games for the Iowa Hawkeyes. All right. Upcoming so. pick here, we got the Connecticut Sun, the Atlanta Dream, the Washington Mystics, and the Sun again. Have the Sun had a pick yet? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They went with uh, they went with one of the uh, um, international talents. Yeah. Layla, Layla Lacan. You know how precious that is. That's so Kate awesome. Martin she, said, she was just I here. was just here to support Caitlin. Yeah, that's sweet. And I heard my name get called. 
Now, does she go? Did she go up there? She doesn't go up there, right? She kind of just has to like be happy in her seat, right? And like go do an interview, right? Because like she didn't get a jersey or anything like that. No, yeah, she wasn't technically one of the fifteen players she wasn't that in was the green invited. Room. She was just here. She was literally um, just here for Caitlin. So, so basically, what's going to happen now is when all those fifteen players who are in the draft do are done, they now start rolling through these picks. Because all you're gonna sh all you're gonna see is a graphic, their stats, and then that's it. The back to back was crazy. Okay, you it, went, it's it's really fast. We, it, we didn't even get the show fast. as as Mary Martinez any love. It's, I mean, what the hell? It, it gets uh, it gets really crazy. So Boston see, Bob saying, let's get to 3,500 3, likes. I was like, where are you going with that? Thirty five hundred likes. We get thirty five hundred likes. We can do that. We can do that. Let's let's, let's do a little like challenge for you guys. Let's get to thirty five hundred. We're about two hundred some away. Beautiful. 230, uh, 226 away. We haven't got any super chats here in just a we little bit as well. We, we have not. not been able to uh, get, get our drinking pants on here. All right. So with the next pick, I do believe that it is going to be after is the... the uh, Connecticut Sun are on the clock. The Connecticut Sun is on the clock as Las Vegas Aces. No, who just took a... The that the was eight, Liberty. The eight, uh, the li the, the, well, the Liberty took Asmari Martinez and then Kate Martin. Oh, went and to the, the Aces. Aces went to Kate Martin. Yeah, the Aces right. are drafting right. great today, too. Yeah, they are. So you got uh, the Connecticut Aces Sun, Baron. Atlanta Dream, Mystics, Sun, Liberty, and Aces one more time. Then we do head into the third round. Is that the back it starts court? to move pretty quickly here, people. Is that the backcourt of the future for Las Vegas? Kate Martin and Daisha Fair? I mean, you're putting that with the second, now second highest score in NCAA history, which is Kelsey Plum. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's right. That's right. So Plum, but Plum plays what position? She's a, she's a shooting guard or shooting guard. Shooting guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kate Martin will sit behind her for a while. I wonder if Fair will slide into a starting point guard role right off the bat. That'd be a lethal offensive uh, duo in the backcourt. She, yeah. They, uh, they have just won the back-to-back -back championships, 2023, 2022, 2023. Of course, they have Becky Hammond as their coach, who has yep. been slowly making her way into the, some NBA roles as well. Yeah, she started She started with the Spurs way back when. That's how she got her start in professional basketball. So when you got a, when you got a player like like uh, Kate Martin and Aisha Fair, and now you're going to have a, a coach like Becky Hammond, who's arguably one of the best coaches in WNBA, I think this is going to be a loaded team, man. And you're only making them better, which is crazy. It's going to be a very good year. It's going to be a very hard year as well because you got to look at what everybody else has. One thing I like about this, as we're going to get another pick here, New York, New York Liberty back up. Yep. You're gonna trade, dog. They're not even gonna tell us the trades are going down. Jessica Carter is gonna go down here for the New York Liberty. I'm so confused. What pick in the draft is this? I believe it was a trade. But we're going to see here in just a No, 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 we missed five picks! The what? What the hell? That was the 20, dude, that was the 24th pick. Oh, they don't show it. What the hell? All right, so they don't show it. That, that's what I got to catch what, up! That's what gets really tough. So I'll update you guys here. So with the 19th pick, the Connecticut Suns took Tiana Jackson. Atlanta took Isabel. Washington took Kaylin. The Connecticut Sun also took Helena Pioa. And then New York did take Jessica Carter. So we do have a lot of people to get through here. So I will go on ahead and update you guys I'm on trying. what I know about these few players here. So when you're looking at Tiana Jackson, who is going to go to the Connecticut Sun, I'll do the Connecticut Sun girls here just really quick. Tiana Jackson, six foot six center from Kansas. She was up with Brink as one of the best shot blockers of the 2023 2024 NBA draft. The first ever Jayhawk to be selected to the Big 12 All-Defensive Team as a junior. She ranks second in blocks per game at 3.1, right behind Cameron Brink. This is absurd. And the 25th so sorry, pick guys. in the WNBA draft goes to Las Vegas Aces. Who's going to take Elizabeth Kitley, my girl from the Virginia Tech Hokies? Kitley is now off the board. Unfortunately, the WNBA draft does go to commercial, and they do select about six players. That was which is wild. Tough, but... We're going to be here. We're going to show you guys who was there. So that's who the 19th pick was, was Connecticut Sun. Was going to be Tiana Jackson. So we just broke down her. So we're going to get back to those picks. But first, I do want to tell we're you gonna guys. run through all the picks. Don't worry. About who was here just a moment ago. So Elizabeth Kitley. I absolutely love Elizabeth Kitley. She got the shit into the stick this year. 
She suffered an ACL tear in the regular season finale. She will not be ready to play in 2024. Okay. She's limping up there, which is extremely tough. But what Elizabeth Kitley has is a Kitley signature here. fadeaway jumper that I absolutely love. Here's she has Kitley. put ACC on the map. She's six in defensive rebounds in the NCAA women's category, but she's not in the top 30 for offensive rebounds. So obviously all of her skills are primarily going to come from that defensive class. She blocked 331 shots in her career. She knows how to defend. What's really cool is that Virginia Tech will retire her number, number 33. They're going to hang it in the rafters. Her father, Ralph Kitley, played at Wake Forest, and she was predicted first round before this injury. So it is very tough when you see somebody like Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kitley go so low in the draft, but the beauty is she is going to go to the back-to-back -back champions, the Las Vegas Aces, which is going to be very cool to see her now. You got to look what the Aces are doing, man. They're sweeping. Kate Martin, Elizabeth Kitley, Daisha Fair, they are making their presence known as the back-to-back -back champions, which I love. Boston Bob, Kitley saying great late pick, obviously coming from the Hokies as a great program. You got Kenny, uh, Kenny Brooks there, who just now recently left, but he was a great coach. So we're going to take it back here. Here's the 19th pick, Tiana Jackson, who I did just tell you guys a little bit about there. And the next pick is going to be Isabel Barales. Of course, that is going to be another um, uh, excuse me, international player. She's 5'11 from Australia. She's also 19 years old, and she, but she does lack a little bit of physicality. She, did, she is a lottery pick. That is what ESPN has labeled her as. She was the Women's National Basketball League Sixth Woman of the Year for Outstanding Rookie Season. Now we're going to go to the 21st pick here, Kaylin Triung. You're going to have her at 5'8", 11.4 points per game. Obviously, you're getting a little bit of an offensive asset here to go to the Washington Mystics. Number two pick coming in at Helen, Helena Puello. She is going to be from Spain. She averaged about 9.7 points per game. Uh, I do like the game that Helena does bring to the floor. She ranked 11th in D1 steals per game with 3.2. She was projected to be a middle second round pick, so she fell exactly where she needed to. She's a potential 3 and D player but she rarely drives to the basket. Coming in at number 23, Jessica Carter to the 2024 round two, number 23 pick. Of course, we are now currently in the third round. Jessica Carter does bring also a very good game here to the Connecticut, uh, excuse me, New York Liberty. Jessica Carter sitting at six foot five from Mississippi State. She played all six seasons at Mississippi State. Um, so keep an eye on the bottom. Yeah, that's where they'll pop up. So she's a solid center who can play tough defense and provide instant offense if needed, if it's going to come off the bounce. She does have a combo of post offense and defense. So you're looking at a low post player here that could be a solid rim protector and rebounder in the WNBA. She's about 24 years old. And like I said, the number 24th pick is going to go to Elizabeth Kitley. That is going to end the second round here for the 2024 WNBA draft. Standing about six foot six, unfortunately, she suffered a really bad ACL tear in the regular season finale, which she was projected to be a first round draft pick, and she went down to the last pick in the second round. But Kenny Brooks, he knows how to really groom these players to be professional players, and I do think that she's coming from a great program as a Hokie, so I think they've got a gr great pick there. As Disney for the win, saying the Aces got her too, bro. That's crazy. All right. I'm going to make a new poll here for you guys. Who are you excited to watch in the WNBA? The Los Angeles Sparks? The Las Vegas Aces? Oh. Well, I started the poll. So you guys are going to get two. <laughs> You guys are gonna get two. I click. I click submit. I meant to click add option. Well, those two honestly are the two probably best drafts. Yeah, they are. They are draft as of right now. Today. You, know, you got, you got the, the fever as well, but it is tough. Locked on law saying Charisma Osborne's the only one left. There are still a lot of good players that are still on this board. Believe it or not, you got Mackenzie Forbes from USC. I would say. Uh, Who are the top two? Jalen Sherrod is gonna be from Colorado. You got Mackenzie Holmes from Indiana, who I also really do enjoy, and you got Charisma Osborne 
who are going to be some picks. Kiki Jefferson, I can't rule out my girl from JMU. Hannah Jump is a really good three-point asset there that you can't really sleep on as well. And you got Rebecca. I do completely agree. Great shooter, good inside game, good college experience, Big Ten Championship, con, troubling rebounding stats. Ability, Muan, I love your analysis. Uh, I kind of have the exact same thing written down about Rebecca. She scored 1,000 points at Ohio State, and uh, she's best with her screen and roll sets. But I, I do think there are at least six good, really good steals here that have not yet been listed. Clayton Lockhart saying, I'm an L.A. Sparks fan. Where would Charisma Osborne best fit? That's a great question. So when you're looking at Charisma Osborne, you're looking at about a five foot nine shooting guard from UCLA. She did. Had the team high in points per game, rebounds per game, and steals per game for the UCLA Trojans. Uh, that's not Trojans. Uh, Bruins, excuse me. Uh, she's a locker room player. I think Charisma Osborne would okay. be really great in terms of uh, your locker room that you're going to get. She's, she's great a vibes on the floor. gal. She's a vibes gal for sure. Uh, she averaged the second lowest career points this year, though, which is a little bit tough. Kathy! Got to get back in. Kathy here coming in with the Phoenix Mercury selection here. Oh! Osborne! Well, that's the perfect fit for her, I guess, here. She is going to be going to the Phoenix Mercury here as she was picked for the first pick in the third round, I believe we're in the third first round. First pick right? in the third round, that's right. All right, so the Phoenix Mercury needed all-around depth, all right? They, they just they, they sucked last year. It was horrible. So they finished with the worst record in the league. They obviously ranked 12th in the WNBA standings right now. But the Mercury's lack of depth is a little bit concerning. So now you're adding somebody like a Charisma Osborne who is going to fall into some dramatic slumps throughout the season, which is a little bit unfortunate. But when she is hot, 13.9 points per game, 5.2 rebounds per game, 4.0 assists, and she averages 1.8 steals per game, the highest on the team, and 41% from the field. So the New York Liberty has lacked perimeter defense last season, so they didn't really need her right there. I think with Charisma Osborne coming in with the Phoenix Mercury is going to be a really good asset. Plus, what's really cool is that Charisma Osborne actually met Kobe when uh, she's got a couple of family friends. She met Kobe when he was alive, when he was playing, and she has a lot of mama mentality when it comes to her. Like I said, you're looking for a good player that's going to bring some locker room endurance to your team as well. She's known for a perimeter defense. And that is why I think she fits in really well with the Phoenix Mercury. All right, so we do have only six more picks here. No, 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 I lied. 11 more picks here. I don't know why I said six. 11 more picks here in the 2024 WNBA draft, which I do think uh, there are still a lot of great people in here as well. So 2,700 people still watching in here with me, 3,419 likes. Go on ahead and hit that sub button for me if you haven't already. So Pinier is saying Phoenix Mercury needs a tall guard. Diana Taurasi can't play the whole game anymore and is always injured. So it's a good pick for them. It absolutely is. When you're looking at her size, I think a five foot nine guard is going to be a good size from UCLA. Once again, they also do produce champions there. So she's coming from a good program. And uh, I think that'll be a, a good steal for them. So the Seattle Storm is now back on the pick. One of the worst records in the WNBA season last year. They signed Agumake and Skylar Diggins-Smith in a free agency, which is a really good pickup. So now you're going to try to complement those two veterans in the WNBA. Oh, as well as Jewel Lloyd. I, I have forgot about Jewel Lloyd being in Seattle. Of course, they had to try to rebuild a little bit since Brianna Stewart did leave. The Seattle Storm did not re-sign with them. They ended up signing with the New York Liberty. But the Seattle Storm's pick is in. They're going to go with Mackenzie Holmes, my girl from Indiana. I knew there was going to be Holmes or Scalia was going to go here in this draft, and I'm glad it was Holmes. I predicted her to go end of the second round, so beginning of the third you know, that's all right. So her college success really came from dominating that low post with an efficient finish. What you're getting from Mackenzie Holmes here is a six foot three power forward from Indiana. She's going to have knee surgery in May. She's going to address some issues, uh, but she wrote that she will be ready for the 2025 season. We're going to break her down in just a few moments, but the Los Angeles Sparks do have another pick here. And that one is going to be once they do show the selection here. 
Mackenzie Forbes. All right, so we got a back-to-back -back Mackenzie pick here. Mackenzie Forbes, a six-foot small Ford. Layla Carrera was in the middle. Okay, that was actually uh, the pick that was projected to go before her, so that works out. So you got the Fever picked up Leilani Carrera from Florida. Then you got Mackenzie Forbes. Now the Phoenix Mercury is coming in with their selection as well. They're going to pick Jazz Shelley, the five foot nine guard from Nebraska. Uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> do we have time? Are uh, we chilling? Or can we show you guys who's been selected? I got them all yeah. here. Jazz Shelley's probably not my favorite pick there for the Phoenix Mercury. She nope. kind of dipped off a little bit low here, but we'll talk about her in just a few moments. They're really just kind of finishing up this draft here. Natasha Claysons, I believe. She's from Belgium. She is one of those international players. I unfortunately don't have any stats on her right now. There were numerous international players, and there was very few scouting reports on them, obviously. So it will be a little bit tough. But oh boy, the I Minnesota see. Lynx are putting their pick in now as well with their selection. I told you guys the third round flies by. So you're going to have Kiki Jefferson, my girl from JMU. She just transferred to, L to Louisville this past season. Kiki Jefferson is the most tenacious basketball player I have ever met. She plays with such passion, and she transferred to Louisville to upgrade her draft stock. I am so, so happy for Kiki Jefferson. She is six foot one shooting guard who is going to do damage for the Minnesota Lynx. She has more moves than I have seen from a shooting guard at her size. If she adds a little bit more moves in her bag, she will become a lethal weapon in the WNBA. But I do think that she, uh, she dipped a little bit when she did transfer from JMU and, and scoring, but she was still a leading scorer for the, Minis for the um, Louisville Cardinals. So Boston Bob saying JMU Dukes. I've had the privilege of interviewing Kiki multiple times. She is a ray of sunshine. I am so, so, so glad okay. Kiki Jefferson got this nod, go. and she got drafted. The last person, of course, to get drafted for the JMU Dukes did get drafted to the Connecticut Let's Sun, so it'll be very interesting. All right, so. Mackenzie Holmes we started off with at pick 26. Is that all of them? Not, not yet, not yet. Not no, yet? We, still, right. we still have the five more, so we're going to do a big five after this. Number 26 coming in here. That was the pick that we're going to recap here. Mackenzie Holmes, six foot three, power forward from Indiana. She's going to have knee surgery in May, but she said she will be ready to go in 2025. You are going to be getting the all-time leading score in for Indiana in field goals and rebounds in second in blocks. She's great, man. Leilani Correra. I actually predicted her to go ahead of Mackenzie Holmes. So I do have Correra coming in here. The six-foot guard from Florida. She's projected to be a draft steal, and that's exactly what she is. Going to the Indiana Fever, who has wiped the floor with this draft. She's not the best driver, but she does know how to foul, and she can drain threes from any position with a little bit of ball movement. Coming in at pick number 28, Mackenzie Forbes. Right underneath there, the six-foot USC small form. She did reach her career high in points and rebounds this season. As you guys can see, that career high is 14.3 points. Um, I think that it, it's going to be uh, an adjustment for her. I think that Mackenzie Forbes could be one of those players that doesn't make that cut when it does come to the WNBA season just because she will have to really provide a little bit more assets to her game. But overall, I think that she had a lot in college. I'm excited to see what will translate to the WNBA. Coming in at number 29, number Jazz Shelley, the shooting guard from Nebraska. Of course, staying at about five foot nine. She averaged 13.4 points per game. She dropped to a three-year low in three-point percentage. 33.7% is what she shot from the perimeter this season, but she did average 5.7 assists. So obviously she does still have some assets there when it comes to her court vision. And then my girl, Kiki Jefferson, coming in at six foot one from Louisville, aka JMU before that. 12.3 points per game. Unfortunately, we didn't have Nost Nostra Clayson's in our 130 so, <laughs> girl or woman, excuse me. It's the international Damn players. It's, it's the international players that does make it me? tough. It's, it's hard to find their, their, their sat lines and stuff. I'm going to have to have a word with Sam Brown about the exclusion of Nostra. Here we go, though. More picks on the board. Here we go. More picks on the board. As Angel Jackson is going to go to the Las Vegas Aces who have been sweeping this draft here so far. 
Uh, I don't have anything on Angel Jackson. She wasn't on my radar here, but she is six foot six. So whatever she decides to do for Las, Las Vegas Aces, she's obviously going to dominate. Let me see if I can go on ahead and bring up um, these picks here. All right. Let me know who that was. Okay, I got a draft cast. Hold on. Yeah, give me that. I got a draft cast. <laughs> Help me with the draft cast. All right, round three. Where are we at? All right, so. We're at 33, or 32, excuse me. That was 32. That was 32. Oh, is, there, we're done. What the hell? Is, okay, Matilda? so number 32 is Matilda Villa. Villa. Okay, we got Ashley Owusu for Dallas Wings. Abby Sue for Connecticut. Caitlin Davis for New York Liberty. And Angel Jacks will be the last pick with the Washington Mystics. 36 Caitlin pick Davis. here, and that is who is going to finish it up and here for us. Give me Angel Jackson. Those are those are all good enough names to potentially be in our database. Angel Jackson, will she complete it? So Matilde is going to be from Italy. She's one of those um, she does. international players. And Ashley is coming from the Penn State University. We got Abby Sue, who actually she has a very sad story, uh, which I will share with you guys here in just a second. So. Abby Sue, she definitely could be one of those players that I, I don't know if she's got it all in her bag right here to be able to really provide in the WNBA. But Here's Matilde, Matilda. she is from Italy. She's one of the international players. Like I told you guys, she is. This is the best international draft class I have ever seen. Five foot eight, 10 points per game, three assists, and 1.2 steals. I think this is going to be a really good addition to the Atlanta Dream. Like I said, the Dream looks like they're trying to rebuild for the next couple of years as the Dream has now taken two international players. Let's go check out Ashley here as well. Ashley, standing at six foot. She's from Woodbridge, Virginia, not too far from my hometown. 17.7 points per game, 5.5 rebounds, and 3.6 assists here as well. So I got a little bit of fun facts here. Well, not fun facts, but I got some facts here on Abby Sue, who is going to the round three, number 34 pick to the Connecticut Sun. So she played at Columbia. She carries a very deep range when it comes to her three ball. She averages 20.4 points per game. If you want to push that graphic there, Smitty. 7.3 rebounds per game, 44.6% from the field. She did have the Ivy League greatest three-point shooter ever, and she'd be great in Connecticut Sun. Unfortunately, here, here's what's kind of tough is that she actually got a gap year in 2020. Her dad passed away from COVID, and she was actually injured her junior year of high school when she had to hobble into the parking lot as she was involved in the Parkland High School school shooting, which is uh, really gruesome to think about. So obviously she's been through a lot, but she used basketball as an escape, which I do think will be great for her in Connecticut. She's looking for a fresh start, and I think the Connecticut Sun will be great for her. So coming at number 35 is going to be Caitlin Davis, She's a six foot two, averaging about six points per game, 5.8 rebounds per game as well, and 55% from a field goal line. You can't be mad at it at all, especially when the New York Liberty is always looking for more offensive uh, weapons that they can use and a little bit of perimeter defense as well. So the last pick in the 2024 WNBA draft is going to be Angel Jackson. She is coming from Jackson State. They're going to pick up a center here. I thought they did very well with their draft overall. So when you pick up somebody like Jackson, you're picking up six foot six. She had a great career at a USC, which is where she started. She was a great shot blocker. And then she did go on to Jackson State. So she proved she averaged about two blocks per game against the Tigers, eight power five conference foes this season. Overall, I have nothing but great things to say here about the WNBA draft class. I think the Indiana Fever is somebody that definitely stole this draft away. I think that Los Angeles Sparks as well. And we're going to go through one more time here in this draft start to finish. So the first pick in the 2024 WNBA draft, of course, went to Caitlin Clark, followed by Cameron Brink to the Los Angeles Sparks. The number three pick, the Chicago Sky, selected Camila Cardoso. The number four pick was selected Rakia Jackson for the Los Angeles Sparks. Coming in at number five, J.C. Sheldon. For the Dallas Wings, number six, Aaliyah Edwards is going to the Washington Mystics, the UConn legend. Angel Reese will fall in the number seven spot for the Chicago Sky, while Alyssa Pilly will go number eight to the Minnesota Lynx. Coming in at number nine, Carla Late, the first international player to go. You got Layla Lacan, the second international player to go to the Connecticut Sun. You got Markeisha Davis going to the New York Liberty, the 2023 WNBA runner-ups. 
Nadia Pooch, she's going to go to the Atlanta Dream with pick number 12, and that will end the WNBA first round. Let's head to the second round here, starting it off with Brianna Maxwell, not my favorite pick here for the Chicago Sky at number 13. Nika Mule, an absolute steal for the Seattle Storm to take their first draft pick here at number 14, the Yukon point guard bot next to Paige Beckers. Celeste Taylor at number 15 is going to go to the Indiana Fever in round two. Another great pickup for the Indiana Fever. Daisha Fair is going to find herself with the back-to-back -back WNBA champions with Kelsey Plum, Asia Wilson, round two, number 16. That is who is going to go there as well. So I think that Daisha Fair went a little bit too late, but being five foot five, of course, some people are going to have some reserves here. So I think Daisha Fair definitely did go where she, uh, where she will excel, which will be the Las Vegas Aces, and she is going to go and play for um, Becky Hammond. As Lord Buddy Bear is in here saying, didn't know chat sports and WNBA coverage. Hey, man, this is our first time we've ever done it. Proud of you for joining us here. Round two, pick number 17 is going to be Esmeri Martinez, the forward from Arizona. Number 18, the other player from Iowa. Yes, they do have five players on the court at all times. is going to be Kate Martin. Super sweet story. She was actually just there to listen to Caitlin Clark's name be called, and she heard her own. That's a shooting guard that's going to go to Las Vegas Aces along with Aisha Fair. I love it, man. Number 19, Tiana Jackson from Kansas. They're going to get a big-time center here for the Connecticut Sun along with their international players. I think the Connecticut Sun are rebuilding for a couple more years. That'll be a good pick as they did have the one of the worst records. Oh, excuse me. No, actually the third record in the WNBA last year. The Phoenix Mercury had the second, the worst record in the WNBA last year as well. So coming in at round two, number 20 is going to be Isabel from Australia. Like I said, this is one of the best international draft classes I've ever seen for the WNBA. So I'm glad to see that Isabel did go in the second round here. I predicted her to be kind of a late second round pick, and that's about what she was. Coming in at number 21 was Kaylin Triung, who was going to be a point guard from Gonzaga. Not my favorite pick here for the Mystics, but they saw something in her that I must not have. Coming in at round two, number 22, Helena Pueyo. She's going to be a point power forward from Arizona as well, which I do believe she will fit in very well there with the Connecticut Sun offense. Uh, I think she's got a lot to offer as well. The number, the round two, number 23 pick is going to be Jessica Carter. The number, round two, number 24 pick is my girl, Elizabeth Kintley from the Virginia Tech Hokies. She tore her ACL in the ACC regular season finale. She is expected to miss the 2024 season, but playing with the Las Vegas Aces, I think she's going to learn a lot from Asia Wilson. Charisma Osborne coming in at round three, number 25, as well as round three, number 26 will be Mackenzie Holmes. Ten more picks here to go, which ran by in a flash here for the WNBA. Round three, number 27, was Leilani Correra, who I love from Florida as well. Round, 20, round three, number 28, is going to go to Mackenzie Forbes from USC. I think she will have a lot to prove here in the next coming weeks for the Los Angeles Sparks, as I could see them possibly cutting her before the WNBA season starts on May 14th. Jazz Shelley coming in round three, pick number 29, the shooting guard from Nebraska, averaging 13.4 points per game, 4.3 rebounds, 5.7 assists per game. And the number 30 pick, six more picks left to go, Nastija from, na, Nastija, Nastja from Belgium. We don't have any information on her. Unfortunately, she's not in our scouting report, as a lot of these international players, some have information, some don't. So we're going to jump ahead to my girl, Kiki Jefferson, former JMU Duke, but current Louisville Cardinal. She will go to uh, the Minnesota Lynx, round three, number 31 as well. Number 32, another international player coming in from Italy, Matilda Villa, 10 points per game. She'll do damage in Atlanta. Ashley Owusu is going to come from Penn State. The shooting guard is going to go to the Dallas Wings, the number 33 pick. Abby Sue, despite taking a draft, uh, a gap year in 2020, she did find herself in the 2024 WNBA draft at pick number 34. Pick number 35 will be Caitlin Davis, the power forward from USC. And the last pick in the 2024 WNBA draft is going to fall with Angel Jackson of Jackson State. Woo! Talk about a star-studded, holy shit, draft. If you guys aren't watching, 
the WNBA this season, what are you doing? Because this draft class is unreal. I think the steal of the draft is still Rakia Jackson. I also do believe the steal of the draft now in the second round will be Nika Mule. I think what they just grabbed there is insane. Uh, at the number 14 pick with Seattle Storm, another Steel that I do believe will be Elizabeth Kitley. I think that because she is injured now, it dropped her draft stock, which she was projected to be a first-round draft pick. It dropped her draft stock to go to the second round, and Elizabeth Kitley did tear her ACL. So once she's fully healthy, I think she's going to be dominant in the WNBA. So, all right. Um, that is a recap of what we have here at the WNBA 2024 draft. So I'm going to go on ahead and ask you guys one more time to just go on ahead and hit that sub button for me. If you have not already, we gained numerous subs here tonight. I cannot thank you guys enough. 2,500 people are still rocking it in here with me. 3,500 likes. I'm going to go on ahead and stay on this stream until we hit 371 subscribers as we are at 370 923 right now so feel free to super chat as well if you would like any super chats a shout out five dollars we talk about your nba or wnba team ten dollars i'll rip a beer bong fifty dollars smitty and i will shotgun as well we're here to party you guys know how it is so i am extremely excited to see what happens here this wnba this was the most stock draft class that i've ever seen as Bossa Bob is saying, like and subscribe. Uh, Pinier is saying, happy the Storm addressed their needs with Nika Mjuln, even if they have to wait for a Mackenzie Holmes. Uh, the fact that they got her at 14th when they need a perimeter defense is insane. You are getting the, the secretary of defense here. Mjuln ended up going 14th, the Seattle Storm. I, I love that pick for, for Nika Mjuln. It was worth her waiting, man. She had to wait, but... That was a steal I'm really happy for. And I think that Daisha Fair ended up going where she needed to, which was what was the Las Vegas Aces as well. Champagne, thank you, TD Sports Cards. Who said that? Fair went to the Aces also, yes. So uh, Fair went to the Aces. So did Kate Martin, which I think is great. And so did Elizabeth Kitley. So they got three phenomenal players from Syracuse, Iowa, and Virginia Tech. I think it's going to be great there as well. All right, 2,200 people in here with me. When we hit 371,000 subs, we're going to head on out of here. But in the meantime, feel free to go on ahead and super chat. Let's have a party. Let's get some drinks rolling. If you guys are drinking in here with me, let me know. Michael Blunt sending in a first time super chat here for $2 saying, where did Angel Reese go? Angel Reese got drafted seventh in the first round, and she went to the Chicago Sky. Go on ahead and give Michael some love down below. We're sending in his first super chat. If you guys are wondering how to super chat, it's a little money icon next to that comment section. Of course, when you guys do super chat, we have a great time. We party with you guys, and it helps us out here on this channel a lot. Um, as Mary is saying, just subscribe. West Hollywood, California here. Shout out to your LA Sparks, baby. They're going to be good this year. They're going to be good. Chase Play said, I live in Indiana, and I'm so happy we got C. Oh, man. Caitlin Clark is a steal of any draft anywhere. I don't even care if it's the NFL draft. She's a steal, man. She's the absolute steal. All right, so TD Sports Car says Fever, Sparks, Sky, and Aces were the winners, I think. I absolutely agree with you. Uh, I think that was great. Uh, Alexa said, I'm so happy Kate Martin got drafted. Me as well. The fact that she was only even there. She wasn't even invited. She was there just to support Caitlin Clark. And then she got drafted, which I think just makes it even more wholesome here. So, Kate Martin was phenomenal for Iowa. She really was the glue that kind of kept them together. Of course, everybody's looking at Caitlin Clark, but she can't do it by herself. Although, I would like to see her try. Truly, I would. I think that would actually be very, very fun to watch. But Kate Martin is great, uh, and I do hope that she does well in the WNBA. And if not, she, she may have to find a couple homes before it's right for her. But I think the Las Vegas Aces and Becky Hammond is a coach that she's really going to respect and play well underneath as well. All right. 370, 952 subscribers. We got 2,000 people in here still watching. Help us get to 371,000 subscribers. We are also really open to drinking as well if you guys want to. But we provide not just WNBA content. This is actually our first time ever doing this. Shout out to Brett Scott for giving me the A-OK -okay to go live here tonight and hang out with you guys. 
but we also do provide NBA content. Content. We also provide um, <laughs> NFL content as well as our producer, Brett Scott, just implemented a new graphic. He did a great job. Did a great job. He actually helped us out fill some, fill some holes, but um, he also did try very hard to find one international player that was um, a great picture, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Great picture. It's, Lord it's Buddy Bay coming in with a $5 super chat as well. as Chat Sports Royalty here coming in here as he is saying, uh, no, it's fine, Brett. It, it is fine. It's just, um, yeah, I understand. It's hard to find those international players. We won't the picture, need, we won't the even picture need to, is we fine. Won't, we won't need to use that graphic. No, we just, we just have such high quality graphics, then you're going to find like the international player. We're like, well, you know, we tried. <laughs> we tried. No, you're good. Oh, we're, we're you just, want to put it up? <laughs> we'll, put it, we'll put it up. We'll put it up. Let me, it let up me, let me get to Lord Bunny Bear's Super Chat real quick saying, how about them Knicks? Which is crazy. It's hilarious. They were up by 30 at one point and then a team on a team last week. Don't have the WNBA team, but Davis owns the Aces. Oh. So maybe them. Shout out to Lord Buddy Bear, man. Hopefully you can become a fan of the New York Liberty here as they did get some really good picks here as well. Uh, let's talk about the last uh, couple of picks that happened here. Producer Brett does want to see the picture that <laughs> happened here. I love it. Which, of course, is going to be uh, pick number 30 from Belgium. Nasta Klesens. They're going to find Nasta, Nasta Klesens to the Nasta Washington Klesens. Wizards. She's yeah. going to be dominant. I'm she she a really fan. is. I'm a fan. She really is. The shooting guard from Belgium. These international players don't mess around. But uh, shout out to Brett awesome. for helping us find shout a picture here. He's been, kill He's been helping us a ton he tonight. Has. He has. He made this and all happen. And Sam Brown, of course, for the graphics as well. Absolute oh, legends. Can't do anything about Sam Brown, man. Never. He, I mean, so you, you want to talk about the glue. You, you want to talk about... He is the Kate Martin of chat sports, <laughs> if you will. He is the glue. All right. I don't, I don't know if he can dunk, though. So I don't know if that's a thing. 370,965 subscribers. We're not ending this stream till we hit 371,000 as that ticker keeps going up, making my heart flutter. I was also a singer in my past life. It did not translate to this. Definitely thing. not this current one. 34 Burn. subs away, though. How electric Burn. is that? Fuck off, Smitty. Come on, now. Hey, I've, I've, I've done a good job tonight. You have. You. I told you the third round uh, goes in a flash. Listen, I'm telling you. That <laughs> shit creeped up on me. It <laughs> snuck up on me. We had five picks at once. I'm telling you, the WNBA draft's very fun because it's not like normal drafts. Because it was they have, fun. Because they have such a small group that gets invited that that second and third round goes by like that. You go oh, to commercial man. break, remember when the Joker was, was selected during the Taco Bell commercial? <laughs> yeah, try that times 10. That's what happens in the third round here. So. Wasn't, wasn't that commercial? I think that commercial was for the original drop of the Quesarito. When the Quesarito came out. Of, oh, oh, man. Damn. All right, TD Sports Cards coming in with a $5 super chat. Wants to talk about the WNBA draft. Let's do it. Great draft. Some interesting picks, though. Lots of international picks, especially at guard, but overall, good job, guys. Thank you so much, TD Sports Cards. I completely agree with you. I don't think the Liberty took their best picks, and I don't agree with some of the Chicago Skies picks in the late round. So there were some interesting picks, but like I said, this was an international draft class that they had never seen before. So not only... Is the WNBA getting better in America? But obviously, they're really trying to expand that into that international. Maybe they're taking a play to the NBA playbook, as we have seen some of the best players ever in NBA history coming from international play. So I think it will translate here in the WNBA as well. Shout out to you, sports cards. That's going to be a nice beer. Cheers for me. Woo! And, and they got Lil B. Lil B, the base god, the base god. <laughs> Let's go. Coming in here with his first time. Super, Super Chat. That was like a nice echo. We yeah, had I was thinking the same thing. Are we in a case? I love the way y'all party. I love the way y'all party. One that more time has, now. That song has other the lyrics. the way y'all party. <laughs> I forgot that was the, <laughs> that was the tune to something Shout out else. Project X, if you know, you know. Uh, <laughs> three hundred and seventy thousand. All right, thirty more subs. Can we get, can we get thirty more can subs? Do it. I know you guys can do there's it. There's sixteen hundred of you and, guys. And, and I know I'm, that there's about thirty of you guys that aren't subbed. I know, and I'm not, not to put any pressure on you guys, but Smitty has a basketball game to get to. Hello, my name is Trey. I have a basketball game. Hello, tomorrow. my name is Trey. I have a basketball game tomorrow. I got a shoe game. I'm I got a shoe game. I'm a point guard. I got a shoe game. Uh, Smitty has a basketball game to get to. So. If you know, you know. I mean, you know. 
Love 30 it. more. Champagne Kev knows what's up. Boston Bob knows yeah. what's up. Hit that sub button for us. But like I said, you guys are free to, to super chat and drink with us while we wait because I don't want to make you guys just sit here and watch Vinny and I goof around and be stupid. Although, it is sometimes fun. Boston Bob is saying 30 most subs. 30 most subs. Whoever unsubscribed, you figure out your stuff and then come back. All right, let's at least just shoot for 10 more here, right? 370. Nine, 370,980. Let's see if we can get, at least get to that ballpark and we'll see where we're at. So, uh, a commenter, I can't read that name, uh, saying if you hit 371K, you got a shotgun beer. I will absolutely, I have a, I have a completely, uh, this is my favorite flavor. I have a completely unopened watermelon happy dad, and I will gladly shotgun this if we hit 371,000. I, I got it. I got it. I got to show out for the fans. I got 1,500 people in here as we have 3,500 likes. This was a very successful draft, not just for Chat Sports, but also for the WNBA. So thank you guys so much for all of your, your support here. Uh, Lord Buddy Bear says, remember when Martian Seeps miscounted during the draft lottery last year? I love reminding them about that. I wasn't here last neither, neither of us were here last year, so that's uh, I'll have to bring that up tomorrow. Guys, right. if you, if you, we're going to be giving you a little bit more WNBA content here at Chat Sports now that we had such a successful uh, stream here tonight. Oh, going to be God. dropping a video very shortly about grades for each of the teams that we are thinking about here. We are? Oh, yes, we are. We are? We are. Let's do it. That's right. We have a video coming of giving out, giving out grades Let's for, do for it. each team. So 12 teams might as well uh, give out some grades, you know? All right, I'm putting a new poll up here real quick for the 1,400 people are still rocking with us in here. Chicago Sky, Indiana Fever, who won the NBA draft? Los Angeles Sparks. Oh, and then uh, the Las Vegas Aces. All right, and then uh, Las Vegas Aces. All right, who won the draft? Let me know in the comments section up above. This is reserved for shotgunning at 371. Thousand, so. Who won the draft? We're 25 subs away. Keep hitting that sub button for us. We're bringing you more WNBA content than ever before at Chat Sports. <laughs> Truly. Literally. Literally. I'm not lying. <laughs> that, is, that is not something we say to get your support. It is true. This is our first it's WNBA a new era. concert. It's content a new era. Tony Domonte. Tony Domonte. Tony, Tony, Tony. 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 Sitting at your live super chat. So Paige Beckers did decide to take her fifth year of eligibility at UConn. Of course, as you know, she missed the 2022-23 season uh, with an injury. So she decided to come back for one more year. So yes, UConn Paige will be in the draft next year. And she's going one. there will be a new WNBA team. The Bay Area is joining and uh, is adding a Bay Area Ooh. team. So will they I, have the uh, number one pick? Probably. Right? I, I don't know how that works. I don't, I don't know, know if they well, figured it out just certain yet. Certain leagues do it differently. I'm not yeah. sure. You know, the NHL just expanded a couple years ago. I'm sure the NBA is going to look into it in a couple of years. But I've never seen the W. I haven't seen the WA, uh, WNBA expand. I think they did it a few years ago, right? The, the Atlanta Dream is new. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Atlanta Dream is new. I think the Vegas Aces, honestly, were new. The Vegas Aces ago. moved. Oh, they moved? They Where were originally they? somewhere else? they move? They moved. Oh, look at me not knowing ball. I think they move. It's only been around. This is the 28th season of the WNBA. They haven't been around that long. Um, I wonder where they moved. Shouts out to Tony, from. Tony, Tony. Oh, San Antonio. Okay. San Antonio Stars. Okay. They moved in 2017. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, it's obviously a very growing sport, and it's, it's a very accessible growing sport here in America, which is really great. I mean, if you got – uh, a couple of cities around you, like a Dallas or a Washington or a Los Angeles, a Connecticut even, it, it'd be really great to go on ahead and support your your WNBA team, especially when you got a lot of stars in here. I mean, there are obviously from the the support that we have gotten here at Chat Sports just doing this WNBA draft clearly shows that there is a lot of support here for WNBA, which you love to see, man, especially as a woman. I love seeing this. This is a sport that deserves love. I've been to both NBA and WNBA games, and I will stand on this. WNBA, WNBA games are 10 times more fun than NBA games. Ooh, maybe not, hot take. not Maybe not in terms of talent, but entertainment-wise, you are going to be a lot more entertained at a WNBA game than I personally am at an NBA game. Talent-wise, you're looking at two different games here, but – I do have a lot of fun. I love it. All I'm right. Trying, I'm, get, I'm trying to get out to one. I'm trying to get out to Dallas Wings. Shout out Maddie Segrist, uh, 845 legend, Villanova legend, Big East legend. 
So she's is, playing down um, here in Dallas. Is Boston Bob saying Tony, Tony, Tony? Is that a thing? No, I, I, it's just uh, I like you know, Italians. Uh, kind of, I'm, I'm a so northeastern guy. I'm not like in like mob movies or not, so I never know if somebody's making like a Sopranos reference. And I don't, I don't. I know. mean, it could be a Sopranos. Reference I don't know by Tony Soprano, but it's not necessarily one. All right, so we are gonna put out a post game video. Po post game. We're gonna put a post draft video out here in just a few moments. Um, Love it. To give you guys our grades on the 2024 WNBA draft, uh, which I hope you guys will go on ahead and it will be right here on Chat Sports' main channel. Uh, we can go ahead and start that as soon as you guys subscribe. 371,000 is our goal. We're, good, we're, good, we're almost there. Oh, yeah. We're, we're almost there. there. I'm going to shotgun a beer too when we get 371,000. I'm so, so down. Uh, I'm so down. So down. You don't dude. even need to be convinced. So. I don't need to be convinced. I actually kind of want one right now. I just. <laughs> uh, we need 16 more subs. Come so, on, we can, you guys. We can't drink can for free it. here. It's company policy. It's tough. We can do this. <laughs> 16 subs. We want to hit two different um, milestones here. 15 more. 15 more. I know there's 13, 8, 1389 people here, and I know at least 15 of you are not subscribed. Oh, yeah. We do NBA videos. The NBA playoffs are coming up. So if you're just loving basketball in general, we just did the national championship and the final four for the college game. We do... A ton of NBA content. The play-ins coming up this week. We'll do. We'll be live for that. We'll be live for the NBA playoff marquee matchups. We'll be live for the NFL draft. So this isn't even the only draft that we do here at the channel. We'll do the NBA draft in June as well. There's so much content to be had here at Chat Sports. You're gonna want to subscribe. I promise it's 100% free, and you won't regret it. Damn, we got another draft this month. Got the NFL draft. Yep, next week. Next week, that's the NFL what's, that's draft. That's what's so cool about the WNBA draft, though, is because they play on they play in less than a month. Yep. May fourteenth is when the season starts. I guess I get. I, I guess I was a good salesman there. I got three more of you guys to subscribe to the channel. And they're very nice. Oh, very nice. Up. So that's what's really cool is that yes, the NFL draft is great in April, but you got to wait until September to actually. You got to go through preseason, all of this stuff, and blah blah. So I think it's going to be a, a really cool to see these players in action in one month, less than a month. Ten away. <laughs> Ten away. Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony, you're back Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah? Pat McAfee's going to have a field day tomorrow. How you doing? Was Pat McAfee, was he talking crazy Tony, about? Tony, Tony, Tony. Was he talking crazy about women's basketball or something? I don't know. I don't watch Pat McAfee. Tony, what did, what did McAfee say? See, Laura Buddy Bear spitting facts. She said, I am sub to most chat sports channels. He is. He, he might is. be sub to every chat he sports is. channel. I'm not hey, sure. Man, We're less than 10 away. Nine subs. How you doing? Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony, Tony. Champagne Cavs say there should be a New Jersey team again. I'm mad the Nets left. It broke my heart. I, I do, I do hate that they put the Nets in Brooklyn. I love the New Jersey Nets, man. Ah, the New Jersey Nets, the Izod Center, the Prudential Center in their later years, if you will. I also do. I just hate that like the Brooklyn Nets is, is black and gray. It's and, like yeah. you had so much color in life in New Jersey that I'm like. And plus, Barclays is the most traffic I have ever seen in oh, that it's a, area. It's a great stadium, though. Oh, it's, I a, love it's, a, it's a great arena. It just goes I love straight Barclays. up. I love uh, nothing beats MSG, but I do love Barclays, Barclays is Stadium. Great. It's, uh, a good, it's yeah. a good change of pace between that. And, you see, because um, you're gonna get the OG it's with totally, MSG. Totally different. And you're types gonna get the arenas. modern with Brooklyn Barclays Center. So I do like that. Um, seven away, seven away, and we're gonna get our N uh, WNBA draft grades video out to you guys on the channel. Six away. Who's gonna get it done for us? I know six of you. Out of the 1,200 people in this stream are not subscribed, NBA, NFL, college football, college basketball, WNBA, and more here at Chat Sports. So, uh, Levante Rogers saying, I don't even know why the Aces are even in this poll. And, and I can see that as them being the back-to-back -back, uh, WNBA champions. But the Las Vegas Aces actually did do really well in this WNBA draft. They didn't have any pick in the first round. They had to pick in the late second, early third. And they ended up getting Elizabeth Kitley who will miss 2024 season potentially with a torn ACL that she just did last month. But when she's back, she's going to be dominant. You got, you got, oh, um, you got, oh, oh shit. What's the Iowa? Kate? Kaylin Clark? No, Kate. Oh, Kate Martin. Kate Martin. Thank you. I kept wanting to say Kate, Kate Milton. Kate Martin from Iowa, the big girl, the, the glue of the, the um, Iowa Hawkeyes. And then you got Daisha Fair, who is one of the steals of the draft when it comes to the point guard. So, I do think that a Las Vegas Aces definitely had some kind of steal in this draft. Don't get me wrong. But I do think that uh, the Chicago Sky and the Los Angeles Sparks will probably be my top two in this draft here. I just didn't love the Sky's last pick. That was not my favorite pick there. I thought they really could have stolen there with Nika Mule. 
and they let her go oh, to 14th we're pick. losing subs. What are you guys doing? What are you doing? What murder? Pat loves that Caitlin Clark is in Indiana. Oh, okay. So Pat, Pat is like gonna. Oh yes, yes, yes. I forgot. I totally forgot. Pat Megan's show is in Indiana. Yep, that makes total sense. Um, he's probably yeah, he's probably very hyped about that. All right, thirty six hundred likes. Shout out to you guys. You guys killed it. As right? we do have thirteen hundred people who are still in here with us as well. Uh, Connecticut Sun GM is saying that Helena Pio may have been the steal of the draft, which is very interesting. Mm. As Boston Bob saying, why are you punks unsubscribing? Unsubscribing. Come on, Ain't six away. I know we can get to 371K. Uh, will you go get me my, uh, my shotgun? I can do that. Poker thing, because I'm just going to go ahead and crack it, because I know we're going to hit it. So that's how much faith I have in you guys. I'm going to go ahead and crack this joint. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the Marshall poker. <laughs> the Marshall thing. Bam, bam. Oh, a Salt Lake City WNBA team would be really cool. I think uh, I think a Colorado, like a Denver Colorado team, would be really cool as well. I think they've already got the Nuggets there. You got the Broncos. I think a WNBA team would be really cool there. Um, especially with the, it's becoming a lot more of like a, a younger generation type. It's like you know you're gonna move to New York City after graduation. No, nah, you're gonna move to Colorado and get those views. Plus, with Red Rocks, you got a lot of concert view, venues there. I, I would say I would say Denver, Colorado is probably my favorite that I would I would put a team there. Get a Chug Bud. Ah, uh, the Chug Bud is uh Smitty. Smitty is going to find all of our apparatuses, and we have two more subs to hit three hundred seventy-one thousand, which is huge for us. We started at three hundred and sixty-nine thousand subscribers. Very nice. And now we are going to move our way up the board. Uh, thank you guys so much once again. This was our first time that we have ever done this, so it's been super great to see. Um, oh, Who's it going to be? There we go! 371,000! Yes! Let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go. 371K on main. I just sent the slack in, which means it's official. No, you're going to use it? Oh, you're going to poke it. I was like, don't do that to me, my man. Ah! Oh, God. All right. Oh, I hold this. Oh, my God, this is freezing. I smell it. It smells like poop. All right. Ah! I'm going to splash them. All right, so I need to. Oh, I am. I'm sorry. So I need a drinking apparatus because your girl doesn't shotgun very well. Don't yell at me. I'm not going to win this race, but I am going to try. It's a good day for women, guys. Let me have this. <laughs> All right. Whenever Smitty gets his life together and wants oh, to come okay. up, as Boston Bob is saying, chug, bishes, bishes, bishes. All right. This is for all y'all who helped, this, helped make this a breathtaking, boundary-breaking live stream WNBA I'm a fan now shout out Caitlin Clark for breaking barriers and making shit happen let's go 371 baby go I think you yeah! I think you popped mine wrong I'm like leaking this whole time in my hand oh god I'm it's all over me thank god we have paper towels in here Oh, you guys just gave us one of the best nights ever here. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Thank you for supporting women's basketball as well. I know it sounds corny, but really, this is the this is the year to get involved. And it, it's it's a lot of fun, man, I promise. And obviously, you guys are uh, big fans if we had this big of viewership here. So, shout out to you guys. We are going to have a um we are going to have a video Going out here on the grades for the draft, all 36 picks, uh, excuse me, all 12 teams and how they graded and how they did with 36 picks here in three rounds. So go ahead and stick around for that. We're going to post that right here on the NB on the Chat Sports main channel. So all you guys have to do is hit that sub button as you guys clearly have done. You have exceeded our expectations, and hopefully we can do something like this again. So thank you all very, very much. There are still a 1,000 people in here. Be sure to take that viewership and put it to our video that's going to be going out here in just a few moments. As Tony Del Monte say, glad to help in my first time chatting and here to witness chat sports history. Well done. 
Davey's saying good shit. Uh, Bossa Bob is saying, you know, nice. Black is saying good night, love. Thank you guys so much. So thank you. Have a great night. And as always, hit that sub button for me.